You are about to experience the Drunken Peasants podcast, the greatest podcast in human history. Please recognize that this podcast is designed to be amusing and entertaining, and thus we engage in satirical comments, exaggerations, and even dirty jokes. If you are offended by such things, please go away and die. If you enjoy this podcast, we ask that you help you to support its existence to by contributing to our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash DP. Contributors get regular access to monthly private shows, special commentaries, Google Hangouts with the peasants, and more. If you don't want to do that, you can also support the show by visiting audibletrial.com forward slash drunken peasants to get a free audiobook and access to over 150,000 and audiobook titles, including great selections on science and skepticism. And if you shop on Amazon.com, we strongly urge you to use one of the Amazon affiliate links in the description section of our videos. You can help support the show simply by using our link to buy things you are going to buy anyway. Now that we've got all that shit out of the way, sit back and enjoy the show. Hey mom. What is it? My son, the amazing atheist. Can we go to McDonald's? No. I want McDonald's. I said no. I want McDonald's. 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 No McDonald's, and that's funnel. Honey, there is no food in the house. Well, it looks like we can go to McDonald's. But you have to be on your best behavior so you don't get banned again. Can I get a Big Mac, medium fries, and a medium Coke? Yes, you can. Thanks for choosing McDonald's. That'll be $7. Here's your money. Thanks. Welcome to McDonald's. How can I help you? Can I have a quarter pounder with cheese, small French fry, and small Coke? I want a Big Mac meal, large French fry, large Sprite. Apple pie, and the M&M McFlurry. I'm sorry sir, but we don't have any M&M's, today. How about a Reese's McFlurry instead? What? Are you serious? Yes, there's been a shortage of M&M's unfortunately. Why not have a different flavor McFlurry? No, I want what I want. Stop acting like a spoiled brat in the restaurant. You're making a scene. Get a Reese's McFlurry or get nothing. No, Mom, you denied it. This is another example of good atheists being persecuted in America. This is an outrage. Serve me the M&M McFlurry now. TJ, they don't have any. Order a Reese's McFlurry and let's go. Everyone here is staring at us. I've got a better idea, Mom. Why don't we go across the street and buy a diamond ring so you can engage me? TJ, that is disgusting. Don't ever talk to me like that again. I am your mother. Oh, so you really want to engage me, Mom? Go ahead, Mom. My finger is out. Engage me right here at McDonald's. Engage me, engage me, engage me, engage me, engage me, engage me. Let's get out of here. From the frigid armpit of America, this is the Drunken Peasants Podcast with Ben and TJ, bringing you opinions of the news from an altered perspective. Suck it! Oh, 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 ah. There are starving children in the world, right? Show me, show me a child. Show me some empirical evidence it's happened. Yes, what the fuck is wrong with you? Lick my butthole, he laughed. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, TJ. You're garbage. You're garbage, TJ. Now, here are your hosts, Ben and TJ. Hello, welcome everyone to the Drunken Peasants Podcast, where we DP the fuck out of the internet. I am Ben, and I'm here with TJ and Scotty. Out of the universe, Ben. The universe. The universe. I don't know. <laughs> I, I am dead. That's TJ a tall dead. order, right there. Fuck you, TJ. Fuck you, Scotty. No one likes you, TJ. You know, I really wish you would just quit the show, buddy. All right, I quit. 
Oh, really? I'm too lazy to move from this spot, though, so... Well, I, I guess it's fine. We'll so we'll just hang out until the end of yeah. this one. Yeah, I'll just hang out here. Okay, but TJ has officially quit. But yeah, I've Smoke quit. Smoke weed every day. I've quit to do that, exactly. That's, that's a good, good pursuit. Point. Song. By the way, everyone, the chat is open. If you don't see the chat <laughs> open, refresh your screens. What? Yeah, we have the chat open tonight. The chat is for open all tonight. you motherfuckers who are so assholes. So you can go there and write poop balls to your heart's content. It'll be a magical time for you guys. <laughs> magical poop ball time. <laughs> no poop ball. Poop ball. I'm so smart because oh, I did that. Poop ball. Oh, poop ball. No. So. Oh, You're an idiot, TJ. Poop ball. Shut up, TJ. We just want to remind oh. everyone uh, TJ, this announcements. Be quiet. Okay. August 14th, The Bible Reloaded. August 17th, Sargon of Akkad. August 19th, Mundane Matt. And uh, August 21st, Paul's Ego. Coming up here on the show. And uh, John Lithgow is also going to be on the show, right? Uh, Nope. No? I thought I heard John Lithgow earlier, but okay. So, we got back from Las Vegas, and something pretty interesting happened in Las Vegas. Yeah, we met John Lithgow. No, we did not meet him. In Las Vegas. We uh, One, we confirmed that Brent Spriner is definitely a, a Gale clone. He I mean, didn't Gale, look happy. Gale was right about that. He, he, he's a definitely Jesuit a Jesuit clone. clone, not a Gale clone. That doesn't make sense. No, I mean, like, I, I meant like Gale is right about him being a clone is what I was right. trying to say. Right. Like, Gale is definitely correct. We saw him. Because I saw him on the show. He looks nothing Spiner. like he did on the show. Yeah, nothing. Precisely. Nothing like that show from 30 years ago. Right, because he's, look, you know, he was a lot younger on that show. Now he's an old guy. That doesn't make any sense, you know? Not at all. It's obviously some kind of clone that, you know, has aged. It's disgusting. And also, we had a scare. It was like, I lost my wallet. I could not find my wallet anywhere. I was like, Oh, my God. I'm like, this is fucking crazy. Like, because I had the room can. I let us in the room. I'm like, I must have dropped it outside oh the room or something. So I'm frantically searching through this room. I'm like turning the bed over. I'm going through my bag over and over and over again. I'm like, you know what? I'm an idiot. I can't believe this. I lost my wallet. I'm so fucking stupid. I just yep. can't believe this. And after about three hours of looking, I'm like, you know what? I'm just, it's gone. I have to accept it. You know, there's nothing I can do. You know, I'm, I'm like calling people. Can you send me my passport so I have some ID so I can get back on the plane? Or I have to go through all this TSA bullshit. And she just like, yeah, man, I, I just can't believe you lost. It's crazy. It doesn't make any sense. So we get over to go over to the Rio where the Star Trek uh, 2015 convention is being held. We're in our cab. We get out, and she just like, oh, actually, I looked in my pocket. I felt around. I actually have your wallet. And I had How long did you have it before you admitted that you had it? Uh, well, I just felt, you know, I went, what I felt it was when I went to pay for the cab. Yeah, you're an idiot. Did you have my wallet the entire time? I'm like, did you empty your pockets before? He's like, yeah, I don't have it. I know I don't have it. And he said a big, gra- oh, I, I guess I have your wallet. <laughs> You're sorry for that three hours you were scared shitless and, you know, couldn't believe you lost your fucking wallet. It actually wasn't your fault. It was my fault for picking it up. Okay, and, and also on the last day, he did use my toothbrush again. <laughs> he used my toothbrush, and then his, his defense that, was... That is actually a lie. His defense was, it, it looked like it's not older than that, so I know it's not yours because the bristles look different, so I know I should use mine. It's not my fault. He went out and bought the exact same toothbrush. No, I did not. No, I did not. Yes, I had that did. toothbrush for a while. I bought it like you months went out ago. You bought the exact same toothbrush. Oh, before. yeah. Like, I knew it was yours. That's bullshit. And you ended up at some point <laughs> switching. You fucking liar. Because the only reason I used that one. I did not one. switch it out to fuck yeah, with you. No, not to fuck you with me. You fucking idiot. Out of your own incompetence, Scotty used my toothbrush. No, I did not really use your happened. fucking toothbrush you nasty fuck yes you did no i did not i'm 100 percent you're an idiot that's yes, trying to did, play this no yes you did yes you, you know, did it's brand new the, the only the defense is the brand only defense new. you have is to say yes i yes you did yes, yes you, you did. did yes you did yes you did yes, yes you, you did. did i did not use your nasty no, fucking here's what happened plaque ridden tooth we both have the exact you std having here. piece of okay. shit <laughs> And here's the thing. You've given me probably a thousand diseases one by merely tooth- being in your presence. <laughs> one of the toothbrushes looks brand new, and one of them looks like it's been used a lot. And mine I've had for like two years, and I know for a fact it's bristles. You've not had it for two years. <laughs> you had some Oral B one. You're talking about the one you actually have at home, which is the one you did not bring, you idiot. I did bring that. I did. The one I brought is the one that I use at home. No, because you told me you bought some fancy toothbrush. Yeah, but that was only a few weeks ago. I bought this. No, this was the one I used no, for no. months and your months memory, before that. 
your memory is terrible. I did not use your toothbrush. I brought my toothbrush. I put it in my yeah, bag. Which happened night. to be identical to mine. It was identical. Mine was more used. But it's a common one. Yours was oh, not. Oh, it's common. Mine was but looked barely used. I know, and that's not the one I use. I use the one that did look used. And well, then you I said that's that's my toothbrush. Because, I think you use my toothbrush. No, I, I use my did. toothbrush, and you had moved it over to your side because you. Got no, confused. I did not move. I did not use yours. You're a fucking idiot because I knew where you yours was placed. You got confused. No, I did not. You're so fucking stupid. You don't know anything. You're an idiot, Scotty. You're an idiot, You're TJ. An idiot, your, your story Scotty. is bullshit. <laughs> you have a track record. Of, use you have a track toothbrush. record of being oblivious, and you're like, no, you're the one that's oblivious, not me. Okay, TJ. Well, in this instance, you. You were. know, what, TJ. I just want to say, bald is beautiful, baby. It is beautiful. Yeah, you fucking idiot. God, TJ, you're so stupid. It's like it's almost like like it's like me and Ben say like TJ is a cartoon character. Yeah, but you know, you use my toothbrush. I did so. not use your toothbrush. Yes, you I, I would jump off a bridge if I used. Yes, toothbrush. you did. <laughs> I would jump uh, off a bridge. Get it, it, it would be a, a, a it would be a kinder fate than having to deal with get, <laughs> get on jumping, Scotty. Cause you, you get on jumping, it. TJ. You should jump off a bridge as penance. <laughs> you know, as penance for using my toothbrush. And I use that toothbrush on all areas of my body too. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you probably do to save time. Yeah. Dun, dun. Troll or not troll. troll. Boo. Other intro's better. Yeah, I agree. No <laughs> way. <laughs> yeah, it is. All right. First, troll or not a troll video. The neutral party. It's a party that is neutral. Good evening. I'm the gamekeeper. Tonight, we're going to talk about... So we're the troll or not a troll today. I was watching the drunken peasants, and I'm wondering, are they trolls or not trolls? <laughs> trolls. I had to share a revelation that I had. It came to me when I tried to classify the drunken peasants. He's like studying the drunken that they're peasants. Not peasants. And they're not even drunk. Peasants are under He's doing like a, a version of the Agent sense. Smith. Um, How do you know we're not speech? drunk? I'm definitely... I, yeah, I would yeah. beg to differ with that. We're usually drunk. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not usually. Well, yeah, usually. I have seen well, yeah, channels masquerading as news. I have seen irrefutable facts from a creationist hitting nothing but thin air. While the ministries claim to be voices of truth, the logical people claim to be uneducated drunks. We never said we were uneducated drunks. Yes. We just said we were drunk and peasants. Fake, it seems. It's not without a sense of irony. TJ and Ben are not the drunken peasants. They're not. In the world filled with idiots, TJ and Ben fight to review their fallacy and hypocrisy. Not you, though, Scotty. No, I, I'm a proponent of creationism and, and all theism. Like TJ doesn't need to wear a mask because he's invincible. God has never been disproven, TJ, so therefore he's a CEO. He would have been fired a long time ago. But TJ doesn't have to worry about that. He can say anything he wants without consequences. Yes, TJ, without consequences. It's so you cool to be able to say whatever wrong without consequence. The fool. A fool. The jester. The only person who can use comedy to speak the truth in front of the king. TJ being in the king, sense, I guess. TJ can be the joker. TJ, no, TJ. TJ's not the joker. TJ's the king. He said I was the fool. TJ, you're the king. And Ben are definitely not drunken peasants. They are trolls. You're probably wondering, I disagree with this. What about Scotty? Yeah, what Scotty doesn't even that? exist. That's all for tonight. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. What? I don't actually exist. I'm a figment of What's your imagination. This? You want me to read this? It's the end of the video. I'm not going to read this. What are you doing? Okay, okay, fine. What are you doing, imaginary oh, person? Put that down, man. Put it down. Put that cookie down! We are the Peasants fan club. We are everyone, and we are no one. We do not forget. We do not forgive. And Ben? Ben uh, Pie, notice ben me. Ben Pie! Notice me. Notice me, Ben. Look. Ben Pie, Scotty. I, I notice. I notice the drunken peasant. Hashtag Ben love. Pie. Ben Pie! Ben Pie! Who are these faggots? The neutral party. The neutral party, Ben. It says well, right there. Well, you they. Got... it looks like they enjoy fine wine. Fine wine and cheese. How do you know? That could be the cheapest wine you can get. Yeah, it could be that box wine, Ben. Yeah, it could be box wine they're drinking. You don't know. Just because yes. they play classy music and wear prison masks wine. doesn't mean... So troll or not a wine. troll on them, whatever. Here's the next one. We're a troll. Oh my god. 
Oh my god! 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 Meow 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 I'm a, that's a, that's, this is personally one of my favorite shows, guys. I cannot recommend it. Little Miss Kit Yeah, show. this is not a troll. This is Come on, guys. This is clearly not a troll. Not a troll. Oh, my God. 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 Five subscribers. That is amazing. I am one of the subscribers, in fact. Me, too. Five subscribers. Yeah, you, you did that after me. You're just a hipster, PJ. <laughs> Sky was number five. I was number six. I was number oh, one. That's so amazing. It's like five subscribers is such a huge milestone on 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 YouTube, and I've made yes. it. <gasps> yes. <gasps> oh well. Maybe thank in a few years she'll be at ten. I love yours. I hate to break so her. Uh, thank you. I hate to ruin her reverie here, but I'm actually all five of her subscribers. <laughs> you made soccer accounts. Yeah, because I felt bad, you know. I was like, I'll subscribe to this bitch, and then I'm like, oh man, but troll, 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 definitely troll. a troll. Not, not a troll. Both of them. It's not, not a troll. Shut up, troll, <laughs> troll, that. You guys are yep. idiots. Here's here's a video that Scotty and TJ both approved for the show tonight. This is Cody Weber is dead now. So we live in a time and where rumors Cody. of people being dead that are not dead can still exist somehow. And I know this for a fact because it's now what, happened what do you mean can to still me exist in somehow? my own town. I mean, like, there have been two separate occurrences. That doesn't it seem like now would be the better, the best time for that sort of rumor to spread quickly? Yeah, with before social anyone, media. Yeah, I mean, like, he acts like now is the time that it sh definitely shouldn't happen. Like, this is the time when it should happen more than ever, and it does. This week where I have ran into someone that I either went to high school with or I've hung out with at a certain time in my life and they looked at me with this fear in their face and they're like, Cody fucking Weber, you're alive? I thought you were dead. I mean, in all fairness, when you look at Cody, it's, no, you're no, kind of surprised still, he is still alive. Still kicking. I just think it's weird. If you think someone is dead and they're no longer breathing and they're in the you ground, know, um, how... This is probably, uh, like, my fault to a large extent because... For the last few years, anyone who's asked me what happened to Cody Weber, I've always answered that he's dead. I, I've even still seen a few people today. They're like, how's Cody? Like, when's Cody coming back or something? It's like, what? And how ironic that since he put this video out, he actually has died. Oh, wow. In the meantime. That's tragic. How hard is it to fucking... Check a fucking Facebook page. Find a blog. There's enough hate sites out there about me. Surely there's there'd be something online about my demise not somewhere. But if you type my name into Google, you will not see Cody Weber's dead of a Cody fucking Weber drug overdose or a self-inflicted gunshot it's crazy wound you to the made head. This video. Nothing a like self-inflicted because... drug overdose to the head. It's it's pretty crazy he made this video and then it actually happened. I mean, you know. Yeah. By the way, everyone, tonight during our first break, we will premiere new songs by Sex Twister. Never before heard. Sex Twister. Never before heard songs by Sex Twister. The most popular band in history. Pretty much like, you know, Pink Floyd, The Beatles, Sex Twister. In, in DP history, it's true. Yeah. And uh, Cody here actually... When he blew his brains out on drugs, when he filled his gun with drugs and then blew his brains out, he and you know killed himself. He was listening to Sex Twister and he was listening to these very songs wow. that we're gonna play. That's crazy. It's magic. Yeah. Yet still, on two separate occasions this week, people have two came up to me and talked to me as if I was a zombie. Like I clawed my way out of the I fucking how ground Cody's and voice walked I know. the domino. Uh, got the same head. It's like. Cause I, I lived with this dude for like a year or something. Like he has one of the most annoying voices possible. It's it just, I guess I guess you kind of get numb to it and like, but not hearing it for a long time and hearing it, it's like oh. But seeing him make that face does bring back memories. Oh well, you know. You know, I mean, TJ and Cody had some some strange moments together. You know. Because I was craving a motherfucking pizza. But there's a plus side to I all this pizza. because just like tonight when I went to Domino's and saw an old friend of mine that thought I was dead. <laughs> I got free shit. I ordered a pizza and I got an order of breadsticks for free. Which this is not being pretty dead, pretty damn man. All I must do is my, like his video voice is just like a yell. Like I got some breadsticks for free. For free, bitches. Cause they thought I was dead. 
That's pretty funny. I thought oh, you were dude. dead. I thought you were dead, dude. Here, have some free chicken. <laughs> Shit. I was going to go to the store and pull that. Like, I deserve some Jack Daniels. You thought I was dead. I don't even know you, sir. You thought I was dead. Give me some Jack Daniels. Oh, and if I do say so myself. And if that's the way that it's got to be, then I think I should perpetuate my own demise story. I should go around my Facebook telling people that I'm someone else, like I'm my brother or something, and Cody tragically died. Give me free stuff for him. In lieu of a funeral, you, you, may be, you, you can you, you give me died, free but it's shit. It's not a tragedy. Yeah, it's it's. No one cares, Cody. Maybe a little bit. Maybe maybe like one percent tragic. Ninety nine percent. Who gives a shit? Cody gotta... was um actually uh, raped to death by a <laughs> triceratops. You guys know those? Yeah. Well, I know. I mean, Jurassic Park. You know, I've seen the movie. Yeah, I can't, Cody. I can't Cody, see what's going on there. Cody, uh, Cody went to Jurassic Cody Park. Cody went to Jurassic Park. He snuck in the uh, Triceratops exhibit. He always had a strange fetish for them. And he started, you know, fisting his asshole and like showing his the Triceratops, like, yeah, you can hit this. And the Triceratops is like, all right, if you think you can take it. And you know, three hours later, this Triceratops is just looking at like its bloody fucking cock, Horns. like, oh shit, no, it's cock. Say though, it is a very strange sensation to talk to too. someone who, ten seconds prior so. to that, thought you were no longer alive. Someday I will be dead, and this video will be very weird to watch. I know that. That's part of the reason why I made it. Because someday this might be my most popular video. I could die. Like I could just fucking randomly have an aneurysm or something. Videos, Maybe man. I get a car tomorrow. People will go at, at the Cody Museum. They'll be like, "Look at <laughs> this Cody video." <laughs> This is a video of the great and powerful Cody Weber. Let's go down. Let's take the kids over to the Cody Weber like Library. The Bill and Ted Museum. The Cody Weber Presidential Library to take a look at the video where he said he was dead. Because it'd be so weird now that he actually this is. This is the pack of cigarettes he had in his pocket when he died. And some chewing gum. Chewing gum. Get into a fucking car wreck. It's or some fucking nice. something. I, by the way... If I die in any capacity, I sure as fuck hope it's not capacity. a car accident. That is the most boring way to fucking die. I hope that I die like I was at the fucking Empire State Building when it got struck by lightning and it fucking static shock and I flew so off the fucking building good. and then as I'm falling down, I think there's a, lot a fucking eagle comes to die. by and fucking yeah, pulls there's off. There's a lot of ways to die in a car crash, like, you know? I'm going to go to sleep. Never woke up. That seems pretty lame and like He standard. died of a heart of heart failure in his sleep at he the died. age. He died of a 78. broken heart. A broken heart. He died of a broken cock. Cody's like, that triceratops wouldn't fuck me. <laughs> I died. In some epic fucking fashion. It cannot be with a car accident. What was I saying before <laughs> He's really that? got the car accident thing. Like, it can't not be a car, car accident. accident. Anything but that death, if you're listening. Now, you know what? Now Cody will die in a car accident. Everyone uh, down below. I forget how Cody Weber died, so if you could comment... How Cody Weber yeah, how died. How did he die? Remind me of exactly the circumstances was, of Cody Weber's death. Was he fucked to death by velociraptors? Was it a triceratops? You know, was it an American bald eagle? We can't, we don't really know. Did he die in a fire? <laughs> I thought he died in a fire personally. Like, that's what I heard last Everyone time. Everyone out there, remind me how Cody Weber died, because I'm, I'm confused. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, he'd be like, hashtag how Cody died. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> hashtag how Lots Cody died. Thought. What would be my perfect heaven? I don't know. I think Islam got it pretty good. What? Like 32 if virgins. I die and there's a bunch of virgins just waiting for me. Oh, like, yeah, virgins. Just, just, uh, 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 funny, I don't Cody. think the Christians got it right. Yeah, no, I think that, that's not Cody Weber's heaven. Cody Weber's heaven is like he goes to heaven and everyone has money and thinks he's a genius. And he's like, yeah, give me all your money. I'm going to take photos. Look at this. I'm signing my bank account over to you right now as we speak, Cody. All these pictures are so good. Oh, God, I'm drinking Cody off. takes the first photos of God, takes them back to earth, sells them for $3 million. Like, heaven was pretty cool. The Christian way that you die, it would just get really boring after a while. You know, you just get everything Playing you want and shit. you want it. Yeah. Yeah, but, but Chris, like... Catholics say that when Catholics you die, like you go to heaven, you turn into an angel. TJ. Yeah. <laughs> the back of my hand is warming up right now. Is it warming? Yeah. Ben's proud. He's like, oh, I gotta get my hand. Oh. Is yeah, that, are you yeah, sure that's not against your religion as a devout Catholic? No. To slap people? No. Even more so. I see. Yeah. So it's actually part of your religious tradition <laughs> as a Catholic. Then you have to come back to earth and then Good Personally, I'm a Lutheran, so... Yeah, I don't like doing good things for We people. broke off. We don't like you people. Since I don't like doing good things for people, Catholicism's not for me either. 
Wow. Well, Fasteners are so much guilt. Like they, you know, guard yeah, like the way the Catholic Church stood by the Nazis. That was like one of their fucking... And all families. the child molesters in yeah. their own church. The Catholic too. Church is wonderful. What are, <laughs> They're so come good. On. Always doing good things. What, what a weird thing to say to I don't like doing good things for people. It's like, why don't you just like, put it as, like, like a tattoo on your head, like forehead, selfish fuck. I'm a douchebag. Forgot about me. I'm not paying attention at all. <laughs> I'm not paying attention. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you got it. I'm not yeah. pathetic. I just idiot. feel like I think Cordy. I think Cody was Cordy. 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 <laughs> Cordy. <laughs> Cordy. This is your name. His name is now Cordy. Cordy. Hashtag Cordy. He's a Welsh Cordy. Hey, Cordy. How you doing, Cordy? Cordy Werber, man. Or these kind of things so shouldn't happen Scooby anymore. Would say it. Like, 15, 20 years ago, before the advent of the internet, then I, I could look the other way, you know? Fucking Billy Joel's dead. You know, everyone can go fucking believe that because there's no way you can go look until there's some new magazine out where you can look at the covers and see, is Billy Joel really fucking dead? And I'm not saying that I'm the fucking I was gonna say man that I want death pictures. Cordy was born... People always ask me, like, does Cody, did Cody do meth and all this stuff? I'm like, I think Cody was just born with, like, meth in his veins, you know? No, you know what I know is he got blood. fatter over the years, like, for a very skinny guy. Well, he, he was fat, he and was then he fat. lost a bunch of weight, and then he's, like, been putting it back on, I guess. Yes. Because uh. he, he used to look like, when I first met Cody, he looked like a fat lesbian. Was he snorting powder? I don't I know. Mean. He denied he did. C Cody told me so. one time, the only confirmed story I ever had, he told me, I, I, I actually wasn't there, but he did. Allegedly, put he, allegedly. He allegedly said that he smoked weed, but it was laced with meth. What? Who would that think was his that's story. fun? That was his story. Like he, he said, I did not want to smoke it directly, but then I found out it was laced with meth. And I was like, uh? why would someone lace something with meth just to, like, to be nice? Meth is one of the most expensive drugs. I mean, I guess it's possible. But he did tell me one time that he did. He's like, oh, I don't use it regularly, but... I mean, I don't think he would. I accidentally did meth I don't think once, he would, guys. I'm not sure if he would do meth, but I know the dude was not was pro drugs. Like he would definitely talk about like how he wanted to do drugs. I don't know if he actually did them or not, because I wasn't. Like, I didn't really hang out with him in that capacity. By the way, everyone, if the show turns out a disgraceful skipping weave of bullshit. Blame Canada. Blame YouTube, because that's what happened last time. I, I prefer to blame Canada, thank you. Yeah, YouTube is a sack of and shit. And if it happens again, we will upload the the real version, which we always have backed up. And Cody uh, probably is what fucked it up, actually. <laughs> People know who I am around here. My name is fucking infamous in this little tiny fucking town. Oh, Everyone yeah. knows yeah. at least yeah, everybody knows What shit town is he talking about? Keokuk, Iowa. I'd almost be 100% uh, sure. I mean, I don't know where he is Oh, now. Iowa. Keokuk is a tiny little shithole with nothing Everyone going on. Everyone in Keokuk knows the name of Cody Webber. Was, 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 it, was it David Cross or Patton Oswalt that said, like, you have a test in life, you're born in a small town? It's you Patton know, Oswalt. Patton Oswalt. Okay, it's like, basically, if you leave that small town, you pass the test. If you don't, you fail. Yep. You know, so... Cody has failed the Cody test. Cody has failed the test. The Even test people I've time. never met in my life know who I am somehow and usually dislike me people. fervently. In fact, just a week or two ago, I ended up having to get in a fist fight with someone that I didn't even fucking you know lost. because he came up no, and he's like, he, he basically claims to be like a UFC fighter type. Not, not, not seriously, oh, no. but he claims like any fight, every fight he's been in pretty much he's won. He's like, oh, oh no. He's like, I'm a, I'm a southpaw, so they don't much. see okay. it coming, man. That's like what he claims. I'm like, they don't see the southpaw, man, the fucking left hand. You know, they expecting a right. No. They get a left and they're like, <laughs> boom, caught off guard. Yeah, no. Cody is the knockout kid. King. Mike Tyson it, trembles at the sight of Cody. Like Cody Webber's here. I'm out of here. Motherfuckers leaving get the, the room. Here, you guys, Cody Webber's you know, here. Yeah, he's like you know. Mike is like pull up that private jet. I gotta go. I gotta leave. When Cody fight comes to town, he's pounding on the fucking hood of my Taurus. <laughs> I'm not even bullshitting you. I had to fight a dude outside of fucking McDonald's because all I wanted was a fucking soda, and this motherfucker knew something about me that I no, no, no. probably that you didn't want to pay for. You something. wanted a pop. Be honest, you wanted a pop. You want a pop. Pop, 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 pop. No, 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 it's a pop. Come on, guys, pop. pop. You want a pop. It's called a Coke. Pop. Even if it's a Pepsi, it's called a Coke. It's No, no, it's a pop. Yep, it's Coke. You want a pop. Coke. He didn't know about myself, and he wanted to Cocaine. fucking hit me, so I hit him first. 
That sounds like assault, Cody. You just admitted to assaulting somebody. But anyway, You're an I assaulter. don't feel like this should exist at Kikuk, all. All you have to do Cody. is go to my fucking blog. Please go brutalize to my Cody. Facebook because I'm always on that shit because I lack any kind of life. Or at least a life with dignity because I'm always well, on there thinking people want to hear about my true. fucking opinions. It's... Like, look at what I think about this no bullshit. Cody's going to go blah, 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 some blah, blah, fucking blah, coke down down clickety, down. Clackety, clack. It's not Just pops, an interesting coke. thing that happened to me today. Not when you Thought sniff I'd make it, a little not. video about it. Oh. We're on day fucking 10. Can you believe that shit? Day 10? Day 10 of what? Wow! Of the Cody Suicide Third of the Challenge. Third way fucking through this shit? I don't know. The boredom challenge. How many people can you bore in 30 days? By the way, everyone, um, uh, we have talked with uh, Kent Hovind's people. Kent Hovind's people. And we're people. in negotiations for starting negotiations. that debate. And also, uh, we've reached out to the Cridulent Vision, Mario. Mm hmm. So, that's all in the works. Update everyone about that very yes. soon. I know what I'm going to do. I'm running out of fucking ideas. What should I make a video about? Write it in the fucking comments below and help me. You should make a video about your own death. Where you die. You should kill yourself for the Welcome video. Fuck with my camera! Yeah. Make a video about how you'll never make another video and then just be true to your word. Yeah, and then go away forever. Yeah, that would be wonderful. I say that's good. That's a good one, Scotty. Yeah, next video is Wild Bill. I love Wild Bill. He's so wild. Best YouTuber ever. That was no oh, intro. Here. What the fuck is with I'm that? Oh, huh? on the news and I, I love the wild bill intro. I want to see what's happening in the world. Mr. Morsi, the guy who Obama helped to take over Egypt, is now in prison because of his terrorist schemes. What? And he's refusing to eat prison food because he's afraid somebody poisoned it. Oh, yeah, he definitely knows Hillary Clinton. What? Uh, Megyn Kelly. I'm America's lost as fuck. Disappointment of the week is saying to Trump, if you can't get past me, how are you going to deal with Vladimir Putin? Well, Megan, I'd say he did get past you. Do we know the story between Trump and Megan Kelly? I thought he was a yeah, kind of. But I mean, I thought he was supporting a um, I thought he was supporting Ted Cruz. Is he now a Trump supporter? Seems like it. Neat. And think about it, Putin and Trump seem to be cut from the same cloth. Maybe you should be a little more worried about how the girly man in the White House is dealing with Putin. Girly man. Yeah, okay, Ferguson, you Missouri. You girly man. The one year anniversary of the race riots and a young black man opened fire on the cops and got shot for it. Gee, who could have seen that coming? I don't know. Well, yeah, you open fire on the cops, you're going to get shot for it. Unless you're me. <laughs> Cops see it's me. It, it, like, well, even they shot off. Uh, sh t -shirt. T even if they shot at you, the bullets would just bounce off you anyway. Of course, because I'm Superman, as we the saw loud earlier. Loudmouth Louis Farrakhan Batman, isn't there you know. taking on the cops. You now that takes a combination of I guess you're stupidity Aquaman and testosterone. I'm semen. Louis semen. Farrakhan only has one of those. Semen. Ah, Tennessee. Once again. Lesbians faking a hate crime against themselves. Lesbians <laughs> faking a hate These crime against themselves. These two brilliant specimens torched their own home and tried to blame it on their neighbor. I wish I could have been in that courtroom when they were told Lesbian that the insurance hate crime company would be a doesn't good have band to pay name. them a dime. Yeah. Yeah. Or a song name. Lesbian, Lesbian hate crime! Yeah. It goes like that. Have you noticed how often homosexuals do this? Yeah. Faking hate crimes against the themselves? Time. Every day. Every second somebody every can day. make a fortune selling do-it-yourself hate crime kits for <laughs> some of these fruit bats. We should do that. We should do like a, yeah. a, a we should put together an, an official drunken peasants hate yeah. crime kit. Are you tired of a lack of real hate crimes? <laughs> Your neighbor's not discriminating enough. It's just the neighbor's waving at them like, there's got to be a better way. Fake there is. a hate crime. <laughs> you know, you go, you, go, you go into the yard, you grab a stick, you hit yourself in the face with it a few times, and you're bloody. Call the cops like, my neighbors beat me because I'm gay. My neighbor's like, they, they cut down this tree and, and, like, and like put up a KKK sign because I'm black. What all the these fake, all these fake hate crimes that go on. His the rest of his video is all silent. Well, so it's a refreshing change of pace. Let's move. I on. like this new change. This is a good new direction for him. Oh, oh shit! Everything's just silent. Yeah. Everything is silent. Yeah. What the fuck?
Volume is like a totally overrated concept Hold on. anyway. You know, actually being able to hear the videos, I don't know. I think it's disgusting, personally. Let's try it again. Nope. It still fails, Ben. What the f- You lose! Good, Good day, day, sir! Oh, God. This is a nightmare. This is not a nightmare. A nightmare is like when you're being chased by a man with fucking fingers and shit. Everyone's razor fingers. Favorite YouTuber. Venom Fang X. Who I think, uh... Will destroy atheism. Hold on. Venom Gay Sex. Venom Gay Sex. Venom Gay Sex. No, it's not gonna happen. I think, uh, we should probably take a break. Okay. So we're going to take a break, play uh, sex culture songs that were never heard before. And, of course, this problem is due to Canada. Thank you. As well as Cody Weber.
right, everybody. We're back. Got everything working. I came up with a new reason that Cody died, because he fucking stuck his dick in a garbage disposal and turned it on. All right, let's listen to this guy. He, he thought it was dead. a light switch. <laughs> On the 26th of June 2015, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in favor of forcing gay marriage on all 50 states in the what? country. Oh, those cocksuckers. What? Terrible. Literally cocksuckers. Yeah, literal cocksuckers. Suckers of cock. Man, you know, there's no... One who sucks the penis. There's nothing worse than that shit, you know? Some dude wants to fucking suck your cock and make you come and enjoy yourself. Fuck that shit. Grovey Fuck that Wade shit, and literally. Their mouth, Fuck in history. it. Each they one of it. these decisions has eroded the U.S. Them, Constitution, gradually morphing the U.S. from a republic into an oligarchical dictatorship that hides behind tyranny of the majority. Through all tyranny the shallow the celebrations man. on social media and in the press, where gay flags are displayed like religious symbols, the collective increasingly controls... Well, you know what? Here's the problem. Like, I don't give a fuck about democracy, really, at all. Like... If I could choose between living in a democracy where ev the population is a bunch of morons that want to pass a bunch of regressive bullshit or a dictatorship that wants to do all the stuff I like, I'm going to choose the dictatorship, as would you, as would pretty much everyone else. You just want a benevolent planet. dictator. I do. It'd be Anything awesome. About you you Not necessarily benevolent, though. You're anti freedom, TJ. I want to just be the dictator. No, don't you want personal choice, though, TJ? Isn't one of the big arguments? I want make? personal choice, but I don't really care if anyone else has it. Oh, okay. Just me. Of course. In this video, I will set out what to expect as we continue down this LGBT road towards totalitarianism. Street marriage has always just slippery been about slope. The streets basically just turn into, like, Society. rivers of cum as the gays take over can't even fucking walk down the road without jizz on your fucking boot heel. It's horrible. I, I am personally terrified of it. I mean, this guy is right. We're on a slippery slope. Damn and, right, especially if you're going downhill, because that semen is slippery. You know, dude, what's next? People are going to be forced into gay marriages. They're going to be forced, you know. This you, reminds me of another act of fascism in the 60s where uh, people were forced to accept interracial marriage. Sick. Truly sick. Or just like, you know, after the Civil War, we were forced to accept that black people couldn't be owned as slaves. I mean, that was... God, so crazy. freedom just dies a little more every year. I mean, the Bible says, Sick. you know, slave obey your master. I mean, I just can't go against the Bible. I can't bring myself to do it. Uh, let me ask you a question. Are you going to go with an omnipotent being who controls the universe, or yes. are you going to go with some human beings on Earth who are fallible? I'm going to go with God. TJ. God. I'm going to go with the exactly Christi correct. Christian God. The Christian God. Not you know, the I know God. we joke around a lot on this show about being atheists, but we all know there's no such thing as an atheist. And uh, God decides, and he is our master, and we need to be humble before him. Like and we need to stop these fucking gay people from ruining America and butt-fucking in front of our children, thus destroying their, them psychologically. Uh, destroying an entire generation psychologically, really. Right, Scotty? Look, TJ, if you roll a dice, what, what will the dice come up as? You know, a dice one through six, six-sided dice, TJ. You might say, oh, there's all these different probabilities. No, it's God decides. Called, it's a, plural is, it's a die. Scotty. It's a die. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. No, not TJ. plural. Plural, it's dice, but a singular, it's a die. No, I'm saying if you roll two dice, like you're playing crap. But you said one through six. Yeah, each uh, one through six on each side of the one six. six on each of the, so that's one through twelve, Scotty. TJ, you're an idiot. Actually, it's two through twelve. Never mind, TJ. You're two through idiot. twelve, Scotty. No, you just didn't hear what I was saying. You're no, an idiot. you're you're an idiot. You're an idiot, Scotty. And you're you know an what? idiot, TJ. I blame your idiot. TJ, you, you know what? I you blame know what your idiot. I blame your idiot. Being around you my whole marriage, life, Scotty. Being around you my whole life, TJ, has caused my idiocy. Well, I am gay married, so that makes sense. The game. Thank you. My gay marriage. So now you take responsibility. My gay marriage has uh, affected you as kryptonite would Superman and destroyed what would otherwise be your genius level intellect. Yes. To the point where you don't even know how to dice. Dice work anymore. I would, I would be stupid. solving astrophysics problems right now if it wasn't for you. Yeah, you know, you can't even play Yahtzee because you just look at the dice like, I'm stupid. I can't figure it out, dog. That's true. Moron, Scotty. You're I, a fucking moron. All due to you, though, and gay marriage. And gay marriage. Me and gay marriage. Gay marriage and me. Destroying and severe. What is that? A magical being handed me 
Clever. Clever. Getting the family. This isn't hard to prove since it's hidden in plain sight, and there are many examples that can be drawn on to sure. demonstrate this. Yeah. Few examples are more sobering than Masha Gassin's comment. Oh shit, sobering. I don't know if we want to listen to something that's sobering. Yeah, if this is sobering, I, I, I mean, I'm not I'm not into that. I didn't I didn't work on this drunk all day just to be sobered by some fucking shit that he's gonna say. But I guess we'll risk it. While speaking at a gay and lesbian event in 2014, she openly stated that, quote, I agree that we should have the right to marry, but I also think equally that it is a no-brainer that the institution of marriage should not exist. Fighting for gay marriage generally involves lying about what we're going to do with marriage when we get there, because we lie that the institution of marriage is not going to change, and that is a lie. The institution of marriage is going to change, and it should change. And again, I don't think it should exist. Unquote. Anyone okay. that actually I'm thinks sorry, that the fake... Like, the, the, the argument about whether or not marriage should exist is totally and 100% separate from gay marriage. First of all, you're never going to get rid of marriage. Ever. People want to do it. It's a it's a religious institution. It's a social institution, and it's a, actually a legal institution. There's never going to be a moment where we just say, you know what, fuck marriage. It's a bad idea, fundamentally flawed. Let's get rid of it once and for all, for all of time. I, I love these people are now saying that marriage is like well, maybe we should just get rid of marriage. It's like so now there has to be marriage equality. Your solution is just well, let's just do away with it. Well, if gays can get married, I guess we might as well just cancel marriage. Yeah, marriage is canceled. Sorry, kids. I guess you guys just have to be bound together by love or some shit. Battle for marriage equality is over now that two men or two women can marry one another is woefully naive. Some of these useful hey, idiots... Hey, you know what, TJ? You should probably support this. It might have benefited you. <laughs> yeah, man. Need to, I want to get married, but I want to get married to um, inanimate objects. I think you should marry a porcupine. No, I was thinking about marrying the building behind them, you know? No, you're, you're going to marry a porcupine. That's the Supreme Court, right? I'm going to marry the Supreme Court itself. It doesn't want you. It, it's got better suitors. Bullshit. It, it's really busy, TJ. The Supreme no, Court's only no, you. no, no. Real no. busy next Friday. Can't, can't meet up with you, sorry. I don't think so. I busy. know the Supreme Court. You don't know the Supreme Court. I know the Supreme Court. You, you, don't, don't, know, you don't know it like you I don't know, know it. You don't know the real history of the Supreme Court like I do. Hmm. You don't know anything. I want, I, all I know is I look at those columns back there, and I'm just like, ooh, what a big column. Along with oh, the nice. progressive agenda, because it makes them feel all warm and fuzzy inside, while others use equality as a cover to hide their hatred of normality. I'm warm then and fuzzy on the Then there's the 10% outside. or so their, their that's know exactly what's going on. That's what they're doing. They're not really for gay marriage. They're just like, they just go home like, I fucking hate normality. Ugh, normality so pisses me the fuck off. Do I see some normal person walking down the street want to blow them away? What's your name? I'm John Smith. I have 2.5 oh. kids and an SUV. I and I'm an you. accountant. It's like, bah. I hate you. Please tell me you have some sort of dark, hidden, secret life. Nope, I'm pretty much entirely normal. You don't spend, you don't spend hours Arr. on end on the dark web, do you? No. Hmm. <laughs> Fucking normies and their shit. Fuck you, normal people. Fuck you, normies. We don't need your tricks. They ain't watching this show. Hang on. People like Masha Gessen, who are aware of the true as opposed to the stated agenda. Did you say Masha Gessen? I have no idea. It sounded like the name was Masha Gessen. <laughs> I'm Masha Gessen. Okay. They usually have financial backing, influence of state apparatus, and strong support from the media and activists. Then there's also another 10% or so, people that see how society is being manipulated by self-serving narcissists and sociopaths that have no concern for the long-term <laughs> future. Man, all these people who want gay people to be able to get married like everyone else. Sociopaths. Yeah, total sociopaths. I want these I want this loving couple to be able to have the same legal rights as a straight couple. <laughs> you fucking sociopath. What is wrong with you? You're like Hannibal Lecter and Albert Fish rolled into one. These people have to fight against impossible odds to keep society from falling apart. 
They're the unsung uh, wow. heroes so of humanity uh, and the ones NTS that oppose gay like marriage victims. even when they know it comes a with a terrible personal cost. Gay marriage is already proving to be the very leftist repression that many feared it would be. Yep. Despite leftists repeatedly pretending that freedom of conscience and religion would not be threatened by their intentions, people are now being punished if they don't recognize- Say panished. You'll be panished. They're gonna be panished. I'm gonna panish you. I wanna smoke some pan. Panish me, baby. Panish you. I wanna be panished tonight. Oh yeah, I'm panished. I think I'll panish my- I think I'm gonna panish myself tonight. What about you, TJ? Yeah. Mm, I need some severe punishment to the lands of pans. Is gay marriage. Examples of this repression continue to increase dramatically. Ash's bakery in Northern Ireland was fined £500 for not making a gay wedding cake. The Chick fil A COO was publicly derided by the left wing press for disagreeing with gay marriage. So wrong. It's like. So you're basically pro-censorship, like, if people don't like gay marriage or, or support gay marriage, they should just shut up. Oh, no, wait, it's only people that are for gay marriage that you want to shut up. It's the people that are, of course, against it that they should be able to f free to speak, and it's their deeply held religious belief. Yeah, not only are they free to say what they want, but no one else can even disagree with them, because if they do... They're bad. They're progressive. Progressive. That's leftist, proof that the left crazy is evil. Communist. The left wants to control you. They want to force you into their gay wedding cake labor camp. At least there would be cake, though, so I'm okay Sounds with Sounds like a good time. I know, right? We need to fucking start this gay wedding cake labor camp and have, like, free <laughs> gay wedding cake till the end of time. Rush Limbaugh can work there. A family-run cake shop in Oregon. Nah, he'd eat all the cakes. Was put out of business for not baking a gay wedding cake. One of the many. Sounds like they should have baked the cake. Any fake yeah. allegations made by the, the lesbian couple business. involved was feeling mentally raped. This is the familiar language of far-left ideologues inventing transgressions that do not exist while vilifying the true victims. In this case, oh, Christians being singled victims. out by leftists trying to turn the power of the state against them. As we clearly see, the left now the state has, has state found you to be obsolete, TJ. I, um, I, I, I agree. I'm pretty obsolete. Yeah, you're obsolete. ...sanctioned license to severely punish anyone that doesn't agree with their war against the family, and they're more than prepared to you. Oh my god. The war against families. The gay hit squads go into, like, a park. Do you have family? Like, yes, we do. We're a normal family. Die! Tired of these families. Are you gay? Oh, we're gay. Okay, you can have a family. But only if it's a gay family. Everyone in your family has to be gay. You teaching that little boy to suck dick? Are you teaching that little boy to suck dick? Okay, good. But if you were teaching him to like girls, we'd have to execute you all on sight. Summary execution. Use this power at every turn. Now that gay marriage has been forced onto the US on a national forced. scale, oh, it's forced. widely suspected that any church that does not agree to conduct a Widely suspected, yes, by idiots like you. It's widely suspected and possible that it's this horrible suspected. thing will happen to us. Like, when interracial marriage was um, made law, was it widely suspected by racist retards that they would be forced to marry someone of a different race? Because I bet oh. it probably was. A gay okay, wedding the only thing that ceremony is someone's race because everything about a person can be evaluated based upon that that characteristic or their sexuality. Those two things. TJ, course. the statistics show that like black people are inherently criminal. more criminal. They're all criminals, TJ. And gay people too. Gay people commit more crimes. They're all pedophiles, TJ. Come on, look at them. Everyone knows that every pedophile has been gay. Every single one. Maybe there's been a couple straight pedophiles throughout history, but that's like the weird aberrations, you know? Totally weird. Crazy. Never happens. You know. Once in a blue moon. ...will lose its tax-exempt status. This is no doubt one of... Which it shouldn't even have in the first place. 
many new forms of state punishment that will come out of the woodwork now that the pretense of religious tolerance. He's not even American. What? The woodwork. What is that accent? Sounds British to me. Yeah, he's talking about America's politics like it's some dire thing affecting. Shut up, foreigner! You know nothing. You know nothing of America, Mister Foreigner. Tolerance is no you longer live here, you're still a foreigner. We don't trust you. Probably not even gay. We can't listen to some non-gay. Well, I mean, yeah, exactly. If he's not gay, we're, why would we even take this guy seriously? As far as I'm concerned, he deserves to die. Because we know everyone in America has been forced to become gay now, so... <laughs> yeah, it's either, you know, gay or pay. And you pay Gay or life. it's your last day. That's yeah. it. You're dead. Sorry. Gay marriage has always been about <laughs> redefining the family so drastically that it provides no legal protection from the state. And... Yeah, that makes sense. That's actually not what it's about at all. It's about gay people having the same legal protections as straight people. It actually expands people's protections, you fucking imbecile. No, it sounds like it takes away everyone's freedom. Yeah, it does. You know, what am I, what am I lying? It was the death of freedom the day that happened. Yeah, like George Washington, if he was still alive, would have blown his brains the out day, on that day. Making marriage so day. open to interpretation that it becomes a farce. Leftists in history could have only dreamed of the opportunity that gay marriage has created. Despite the smoke and mirrors, the left's foundation is rooted in the eradication of the family, religion... Why would they give a fuck about any of that? Why would the left... Why is the left trying to eradicate the family? Like, what is the end game there? First, we take away the family. Ha <laughs> ha! Then, left-wing paradise. <laughs> because you're a slave to the state, then, TJ. They'll have no one to turn to but the state. The state will take care of you, little Billy. You um, have no family. You boob beast man. No worries. Communism is here, children. You boob. Our first order of business: kill he man. You big and gorged tit with a giant nipple. And well, the nation graphics. state. Sorry. Chapter two of the Communist Manifesto makes it perfectly clear that all three of these things must go before a socialist utopia can be fully. Oh, Canada! Oh, Canada! Oh, First, you marry the gays. Realized. Rather than being an agenda of the past, the modern left are as obsessed with eradicating the family and religion as ever. Gay marriage provides a multi-pronged attack against the family and religion in the particular, the evil and gays. it's important that people. I guess I guess they mean it like at the legion of, of like hatred of normalcy. Like they have like they have basically the transgendered people. They have then they have some minorities and they have some gay people. It's like how can we? They're destroy? all no. I think they're all symbolized by a single supervillain. Like it's like chan, transgendro or something. <laughs> Destroy normality. Destroy transgendro. Communist normality. The state is everything. Fuck religion. Transgendro have tits and penis. Confuse Middle America. Around TJ. <laughs> TJ. Exactly. TJ. Very happy. <laughs> I'm just I'm I'm there behind transgendro, like behind writing shit him. down. Oh, oh. God, Trevor, you're so smart. Uh, I like the way you destroy normalcy. Ooh, you just destroy the normies. Ooh. Yeah, destroy the family. Ooh. Take a fucking Norman Rockwell painting and just piss on it. Mm. It's never going to happen, TJ. Piss on it with your big girl cock, Transgendro. Ooh. Transgendro is better thing to do than <laughs> that. Ah. Someone draw Transgendro. For the next stage of this process. Rather than gay marriage being the full realization of the LGBT agenda to redefine marriage and the family, it's barely the beginning. Among other oh, things, polyamory will become a major part of the next big push. Oh, no. uh, have you read the Bible? Because, um, I don't know, that's kind of in there. A lot. Yeah, they don't seem and to And God doesn't really seem to have a problem with it, so... Uh, 
that? Did God just kind of forget about that? He's just kind of like, ah, oh, I'll let it God's slide. like, never mind. I changed my mind about the stuff that was okay for Solomon isn't okay for I know, you people. And they bring this up time and time again. It's like, it's it's going to be polygamy. There's going to be, you know, men with ten wives and women marrying ten men. And it's like, who cares? Even if that was to happen, I wouldn't even give a shit. It'd be like, yeah, whatever. That's their business. Yeah, what the fuck does that even have to do with anybody? Is, is, is it like, is, my question is like, are they doing it willingly and like freeing of their own mind and sound mind? Like, yes, and who gives a shit? I give a shit, Scotty, because it's destroying the family. And many leftists have privately Wouldn't admitted a, this. Make a greater Some or larger family, secrecy. though? No. It just... Scotty, if, you, if the family is different, the family is destroyed. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't understand. When we talk about family, we're talking about a very specific kind of family. Mom, dad... Brother, sister, any other kind of family is fucked up and wrong. Okay, I apologize. And sick. I'm sorry. Filmed in left-wing events agreeing that they are open to this change. There are, of course, people like Masha Gassin that will publicly admit this, albeit quietly for the time being. Whatever the case, gay marriage is just one small step towards the wider goal of subordinating the privacy and freedom of the individual to the collective. Yeah, man. <laughs> what is this, the Borg? We are the gays. We will add your biological and technological distinctiveness to our own. I do not like those shoes. Resistance is this futile. entails a society where family, private property, parenthood, and all formerly unalienable rights of the individual are now controlled by authoritarian decree. What yeah, man, the way that individuals can decide, have a wider variety of people to choose from when they're getting married, totally limits the fucking rights of the individual. Yeah, this guy's freedom has been destroyed in one fell swoop. I mean, there's not, it's not even debatable. Come the on. fact that people have the freedom to do things they couldn't before destroys freedom. You're so right, dude. Yeah, actually, I'm glad you see his point, because I have really been inspired by this video, and I think that we need a constitutional amendment to ban gay marriage. Yeah, it's sick the way that we let those individuals decide things, because in the process, we've destroyed individuality. Oh, they're just so gross to me. Yeah, you know, like, you know, why you stick a dick in your butthole, faggots? Come on. Amazing atheists! Amazing atheists! That was a banana. That's a banana different. Up your butt. If it was a dick... Why'd you put a dick up your you, butt? You've sinned. It was a dick. You have sinned and you should be stoned to that death. Was a, that would be a sin. And, they, and I should be shot. I should be shot in the fucking head. No, you should be stoned. The Bible says so, TJ. Well, I'm, I, I'm already Bible. stoned. I don't know. Well, One of the most harmful changes that gay marriage has led to is the redefinition of marriage, not as a union based on reproduction and selfless child rearing. It was never that, anyway. I mean, like, people who were infertile still got married. Sure. It had nothing to do with ch children. Plenty of people have marriages of convenience. Plenty of people get married. There's a, a ton of reasons people are married. I mean, some of it is love. Some of it is, oh, we, we're going to have a kid, so we, we're going to get married now. I mean, there's a million reasons to get married. It's not just like, okay, there's, these are the only reasons. It's only for religious reasons. I think most people, even a religious, don't get married purely for religious reasons. They probably just want to be married. It's probably like, okay, this is a societal norm for our, our you know, basically our niche, our community, our group. So we're going to follow through with that. Yeah. Sorry. There. But one based on a narcissistic interpretation of love. This has now opened the floodgates to practically any definition of marriage based on the same arguments. So yeah, I mean, like, it's sick the way that people can decide for themselves, man. It's really fucked up. That really just destroys freedom, you know? The, the ability of people to decide for themselves what their own standards are for getting married is just so fucked up, right? Right, bro. You know what? I, I, I love this. We should ban gay marriage. What about guns? I have a Second Amendment right. It's like, I don't think gay marriage is killing anyone, though. Uh, well, I don't like it. It makes me uncomfortable. I see two men holding hands, so pretty sure we should ban that. And no one's uncomfortable when someone brings a uh, AK-47 to Chipotle. No, I, I actually feel safer. Okay, what if a mass shooting were to happen at Chipotle and everyone there was armed? They would stop the shooting. Yep. Done. 
We're just refuting your fucking stupid leftist progressive argument, you fucking idiot. You're right, you did. You put me in my place. Some counter gay marriage arguments by defining the marital reproductive union of a man and a woman as the natural family. A better term than the natural family would be the biological family, since the union of a man and a woman leads to the merging of their biological DNA through their offspring. The left has DNA? What? I don't really know about all that. I mean, now we're getting into biology? I mean, as a Christian, I mean, can't you kind of say that evolution and things like that? You know, hmm, I don't really know if you should go that route. Didn't really seem to be the route you should go. You should just be like, that's how God wants God it. God wants it. Fuck y'all. Yeah, I think that's a very bad route for Christians to go start, start talking about science. Like, hmm. Yeah, it doesn't really support anything you're saying. Maybe you should go a different way with that. <laughs> yeah, take a take yeah. a left. <laughs> take a left. Or take a right, I should say. Take a right instead of a left there. Actively tried to deny that this is the basis for marriage, effectively making them DNA deniers. DNA <laughs> So you're, you're trying to say that homosexuals deny DNA? DNA is a lie! I, that's the most absurd that I've ever heard about DNA in my life. You know, I, honestly, I was, uh, our uncle, me and Scotty's uncle, is uh, gay. And um, I, I asked him when we were kids, we asked some guy, like, what's DNA? And he's like, lies of the fucking crazy right-wingers. Don't pay no mind to that DNA. He actually beat TJ with an inch of his life for even mentioning DNA. If you ever mention DNA in this house again, you'll be lucky to be alive. That's what he said. TJ was beaten to a pulp That's just for even sick. mentioning it. And he was pulled out of science class after that, too. It's like, you're never going to learn any of this science crap again. Gays hate DNA. Read the Bible. That's all you need. Thank God for the Bible. Marriage also predates the state, meaning that the left using the state to redefine marriage violates natural law as well as biological reality. What many people don't what? understand... So, okay, even if that's true, so what? Social institutions evolve and change over time. No. It's, it's so absurd to be like, well, 10,000 years ago, people still had these bonds. Like, okay, we see them in animals even. There's monogamous animals. Like the albatross or whatever. I mean, there's plenty of them. It, it's so stupid to be like, animals bond in pairs. So, like, therefore, you know, that means it's natural. And because it's natural, that means, like, there's also animals that exhibit homosexual tendencies. Ha <laughs> ha! And uh, also am animals that exhibit po uh, polygamous tendencies. Like lions, hippos, you know, and they have uh, huge harems. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of animals that have like huge harems of, of females, or I'm, maybe there's maybe there's even some where females have huge harems of males. I don't know. Probably so. It's nature. It's pretty big and pretty. So uh, yeah, and social institutions do grow and change and evolve. The fact that the White House is covered in a rainbow right now is pretty much proof of that. Well, in this picture, it was obviously a few weeks ago or whatever. Yeah. About tyranny is that it usually comes bearing gifts, hence the reason gay marriage is not what it seems. In practice, it's a mechanism to suppress and control the natural right of the individual to have a family without being intruded on by others. Okay, so what part of gay marriage exactly intrudes upon other people's rights to form whatever sort of family they want to form? Yeah, let's take, take something like Josh Feuerstein, for example. Do you think now he just can't have a family? Like, you know, I think he has, like, yeah, I think he has kids, I think he right? shouldn't have a family. You know, like, but, but like, that's like saying, like, suddenly now his family has to be dissolved. Like, sorry, kids, you know, gay marriage is legal now, so this is done. I'm just going to go fucking be gay married to some dude in San Francisco. You know, see you later. Yep, your mom is uh, gonna go uh, meet a nice lesbian, you know, and and You're gonna your live dad with her. is gonna go off to San Francisco, and you you kids are just gonna be raised by the state, as was the plan all along. Oh, the state! Oh, wow! Yeah, you know what? You're one step ahead of me, TJ. Yeah, the state needs to raise the kids, because you know these gays they're too busy having these these their copulations their to gay even orgies. bother raising yeah. kids. You know? By the way, everyone, uh, everyone saying armored skeptic, uh, we are in negotiations with having the armored skeptic. We're negotiating. Ben's negotiating with him very strong. Armored skeptic and shoe on head, probably together in the same. Yeah. A and naked, of course. They will be definitely be but naked. naked. But uh, naked. You'll get to watch guy. armored skeptic fuck that, whoever that girl is, and they're <laughs> no, going to fuck no. on camera on the drunken peasants live. Guaranteed a promise made to you by TJ. So the promise is worth nothing. Yes. True.
All sorts of sophistic arguments have been employed to tear down the reproductive basis of marriage, therefore giving license to the state to interfere with family life. Two examples are pointing out that not all married couples have children, or that gay people should be able to take advantage of married tax and inheritance rules. Yeah, those are both good arguments. How are you going to refute those? Let's hear it. But even though some married couples don't have children, this is hardly the same as redefining who can participate in marriage. Okay, we understand that who can participate in marriage as a legal institution and a legal okay. institution only has been redefined. Okay, but here's the problem with this, this whole argument. If you listen to everything this guy has said, which is just like total nonsense, he's obviously just working back from the conclusion. He's like, I hate this, so now I have to have a bunch of bullshit sophistry and other shit to justify why I hate this. There's not really any good reason to hate it, so I have to make it this boogeyman of like, well, it's really destroying the fabric of society, so that's why I'm opposed to it. Uh, here's the thing. Gay people have been getting married for years. They just weren't entitled to it as a legal institution. You know, gay people were getting married. Gay people were having wedding ceremonies and being together all the time. Yeah, and considering themselves married, even though they weren't, it wasn't recognized. It just wasn't. Re yeah, it just wasn't legally recognized. The only thing that's changed has been a legal recognition. So the social fabric being destroyed that you're talking about—that's already been happening for years. If it's been happening at all, which it hasn't been, because you're a fucking moron. I mean, how ignorant are these people? It's like, do they really think that just? homosexuality equates to just like you know why I just want to destroy society it's like how ridiculous can you be like homosexuals exist all around you they are just normal people there's nothing different about them except their, except really their sexual preferences <clears throat> you're fucking stupid you're unbelievably ignorant I mean come on no he's not he's brilliant man. yes he is he's a brilliant man in relation to tax breaks married couples usually have children to take care of and it's fair that the level of tax they pay reflect. Uh, usually? Well, what, what the fuck does usually mean? I mean, there's plenty of married couples that don't have children and they're still entitled to tax breaks. Yeah, that's just how tax code is written. I don't really see why that's a big deal. You know, what does it matter how common it is? It doesn't. It's totally irrelevant. There's Yeah, there's plenty of couples that don't have children. So what? They and not only that, don't aren't there gay couples that have children? Aren't there gay couples Plenty. that adopt? Aren't there sure. gay couples that have in vitro fertilization? I mean, there's yeah. So what the fuck are you talking about? You're so fucking stupid. Like how 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 can you even spew this shit? Like do, do, do you not have anything in your mind that questions anything that you say? Like on any level at all? Like for, from any fucking perspective whatsoever? Well, you're operating on a belief system. When you believe something without evidence, it doesn't really matter because you don't really need evidence. You, the evidence is just like the shit you can create. Like, you know, I think it's bad because I, had some, I feel like a visceral reaction to it, so I'll just justify it however I can. I guess so. This added expense. As for inheritance rules, while marriage makes this simpler for families, individuals are free to pass on their inheritance to anyone, whether they're married to them or not. Another fallacious argument for gay marriage is that gay people aren't always allowed to marry. In reality, any adult can marry, just not someone of the same sex. Oh my god. You're so fucking This is stupid. such a lame thing to say. Conservative Americans use the same argument. Well, uh, you have the right to marry someone, just not who you want. So we can go back, <laughs> once again, we can go back to interracial marriage and be like, we're not saying black people can't get married. We're not saying white people can't marry. We're just saying you can't marry each other. You gotta marry someone of the same race. Marry. You gotta marry someone of the same race as you are. That's all we're saying. Stick with your own kind, buddy. You know, you know, red goes with red, and white goes with white, and black goes with black, and that's the way them, nature wants. That's what God wants. You it. mix them, you know, you don't know what's gonna happen. Probably yeah. chaos and anarchy. Let's Can't move do it. on. Yeah, sure, let's move enough on. of this fallacious, horrible. Here's shit. the top three atheist arguments, and uh, just a parting fuck you to this guy. Fuck you. He's pretty awesome. Well, fuck you. Fuck you. Life. And fuck Life you is too, full of tough decisions. Now I've got this very bright light Gold. in my face. Venom gay sex, Venom. I call it. Ah! Four lights! Actually, I count many more than that. So, I need to decide if I'm going to go with the classic Agent Smiths, or I'm going to go with the Neos. They look almost identical and no one cares. Yeah. Let me know in the comment section which you prefer.
I prefer neither. I prefer neither. Those now, another nice. decision I had to make today was what are the top three most common or the absolute best arguments that atheists use? They rely upon these whenever you have a meaningful conversation with them. And so I thought it was incumbent upon me to respond to... Incumbent. It was incumbent upon me. It was incumbent upon me to respond. To give you a scintillating uh, response. Three... To enlighten... The three arguments the atheists make. Yes. Only three arguments. The three main arguments that atheists are constantly making. I'm going to destroy them once and for all. Proving that atheism is irrelevant and doesn't have anything to do with our times. Cheetah is now a 1930s character. Ah. Hey, fellas. Say, hey, fellas, let's go down to the dock. Let's go down to the docks for our beer. These, what I felt were these most common arguments. Dun, the dun, top dun, three. Dun, 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 dun. Atheist arguments destroyed by Venom Fang X. Yeah. Live on pay per view. Live on the. Only $99.95. That's pretty cheap. When is that? What's the date of that? August 27th. August Venom 27th. Venom Fang X. Destroy atheists such as Thunderfoot, the Amazing Atheist, and others. Others. And others. I feel bad for everyone who just gets billed as others. And others. Others. They're not important enough to be mentioned. Da, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Quit using copyrighted music in your videos. You Argument yeah. number three. Why are you using Death Note? Come on. Da, 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 the problem, the problem of, of divine, divine hiddenness. 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 Thank you for stop playing that music so we could. He's gonna play it again. This question is sometimes phrased I like heard this. Another music starting. Where is He's using the Death Note God? soundtrack? Yeah, Why like, can't you didn't compose that, and I don't think you have permission to use it, so don't use it. I don't think X, what are you doing? Don't you have copyright law? Don't you understand? <sighs> I see him. Why don't I have some form of sensory perception of God? God, where are you? you phrase the question like well, that, the, the answer becomes God. readily apparent. Well, I can't believe that. Where's God? The man only has five senses. I can't find God. I'm looking all over this room. So here's a here's a question. Why don't you have perceptory reception of God? Is God in here? Scotty. Here's a question too. Like, I'm looking for him. I'm trying. So in in the days of the Bible, there's tons of descriptions of people meeting God, seeing God, talking to God, feeling God, probably smelling God at some point in the Bible. I mean. You know, so you're going to sit here and say, oh, well, you know, people think God's not real just because they can't feed him in five cents. But w back in God the days like? when the Bible was written, uh, lavender and peaches. Wow, that's, God smells good. Yeah, peaches and lavender. But, uh, you know, uh, so the real question is why was, why is not, it's not only why is God hidden, it's why wasn't he always hidden? Why, why was it that people used to be able to strike up a conversation and just talk to God? And see his angels, and see his miracles, and all this other shit. Some when bad shit sinks, goes down, but where is God? The point okay. is, our senses are limited to the material realm. Now, God creating the material realm would have to be, by definition, uh, outside of or transcend the material realm. And so uh, no. Why? Why would it have to? There's no reason why it would have to. You know... It's the same bullshit reasoning we hear time and time again. You know, it's like God created everything, so there was nothing, then God created it, so it's like, so then nothing is possible. And they're like, well, yeah, it's possible there's nothing, then something's created. So you're saying the Big Bang is possible then. Because that's what the same thing we're saying. You know, I don't even get how Christians use this argument over and over again and say, like, this is checkmate, buddies. It's like, this is not. This is so stupid. Shut up with this shit. Another thing is, like, I love just watching people like Venom Fang X tap. I mean, like, it's so obvious that either God doesn't exist or God doesn't give a shit. And they have to tap dance and, like, try to make it fit their Christian theology. It's so evident that this God is not real, but they have to try to make it real. And then they act smug about it, like, well, of course you can't see God or smell God or taste God or hear God or touch God. Because that, you know, he exists beyond the material realm. Well, how come he didn't exist beyond the material realm in your it's book? It's a test, TJ. A test. God's testing you, TJ. He's taking notes right now. Is TJ gonna buy an... Oh, TJ's an atheist. So far, I'm getting an F. You got, you got an F right now, dude. F minus from God. If you just start believing, A plus. You need at least a C to get into heaven, so I'm... I'm I oh, no, to... God's pretty strict, TJ. You need an A plus. Oh, really? A oh. plus, 100%. So expecting a sensory perception of God uh, defies the very nature of what God is. It's sort of like, do you look inside of... Uh, Hamlet to find Shakespeare? 
Is Shakespeare conf- What does that mean? Do you look inside Hamlet to find Shakespeare? Shakespeare, are you there? You in there, Shakes? Are you- uh, is this Trafford? How you doing, Shake? Where, where is he? Where you at, buddy? Where is he? You in there? Mr. Spear! Spear, are you here? Oh, he's not here. Okay, here's the difference. Uh, with William Shakespeare. There's tons of evidence he was a person and lived. That, that, that's it. We can be like, you know what? Some guy in the 16th century wrote some plays. And he was a gay female stoner as well. Yeah, there's all the, there's, there's always, obviously with history, there's always, you know, shit like that. I mean, but there's no question Shakespeare was alive. It's like you're just asking us for this total faith-based proposition and trying to equate it as the same thing. Like, no. It's like... Let me ask you a question, Shadi. Let me question. Okay, go ahead. Uh, you you walk down the road, right? A car drives by you, right? Yeah. Would you say that car has has a driver? Yeah. Okay. Well, the universe well, is like an a, automated vehicle. The universe is like a big car, you know, and it needs a driver too, and that driver's God. You oh. find you know to what? His work. You know, I never thought about when it like we that. understand that the universe right. is the work of God, the work of His hands, as the psalmist says. We understand that God is outside of the universe which He created. The Creator is not inside of His creation. <laughs> Why not? Though He <laughs> appeared many times inside His creation. That's how you know about it, supposedly, when the Bible was written, even though it was written hundreds of years after the those events. Yeah. Plus, God talks to people in the Bible all the time. Like, there's even a part in the Bible where Him and like. Um, uh, Abraham, I think, are sitting there fucking arguing. Like, he's negotiating with Abraham, like, well, would you spare Sodom and Gomorrah for 45 good people? And God's like, well, I guess. How about 40? How about 35? How about 30? 19? How about 25? Three? You know, this motherfucker was haggling with God, but now Venom Fang's gonna say, well, God exists outside the universe, and no one really can see him or touch him or anything. You don't know what God's doing unless he chooses to manifest himself in a way that we can perceive with our senses. Why does we, he do that Oh, now? so it's only, if only he chooses. So why doesn't he choose then, you moron? I mean, yeah, like, why does it have to be this total faith-based proposition? Why can't it just be like, I'm God, here I am, you know, I'm the creator of the universe. Like, oh, okay, that, that's resolved then. Well, I guess we know what's what now. Yeah, I mean, it's really simple and easy, and then we would just know and... And we could be like, well, we gotta follow his rules. He created us all. Yeah. So God so you have an expectation that if God is real, here and if God, God loves us, that he would want to communicate with us or relate to us in a way that is tangible to us, given our limitations of, so of sensory God perception. Is and Wouldn't God, God want to manifest okay, himself? Wonderful. Yeah, God is this... God is the big, vague thing in the sky. Not in the sky, it's outside of our realm, TJ. We can't even, we can't even see it unless he chooses to show us. Which he hasn't done for a long time, surprisingly. He must just be away on business. Unless he's talking to Pat Robertson, you know. He Maybe God's busy creating other universes and Earths and planets and shit. He's just busy right now. God's busy. Yeah, God's busy. To us, so that we could both know that he exists as well as have a I genuine know relationship God exists. with him. And so, let's recognize for a moment that it is a human desire to have that kind of experience. Okay. And so I'd like to think of it sort of like uh, hunger. Some like the cheese. reason we get hungry. I like to think of God the way I think of hors d'oeuvres. Like, you know? you're at a Christmas party, you're kind of hungry, you just ate, but there's hors d'oeuvres in front of you, you really don't want to eat, but it's the holidays, so you eat. Wow, yeah, it's just you like know, that. That's what God's like, that's guys. That's what God's like, everyone. No, God is like if you're hungry for hors d'oeuvres and someone says, the hors d'oeuvre table's right over there, and they send you to like a blank table, and you're like, where's all the hors d'oeuvres? It's like, well... Well, they everyone exist. else knows they exist. They exist beyond reality. You you can't <laughs> just fucking eat them, you know. You gotta eat them you know, with your soul. Sounds mysteriously delicious. It does. Ooh, this I'm, cheese trends. I'm gonna have a party next. Next time I have a party, I'm just gonna like have a blank table and just be like, I believe it's there, so it must be. <laughs> the emperor's clothes, right there on yeah. the table, folks. Can't you see them? The reason we get hungry is, yes, our body needs sustenance, but there is a corresponding reality to our hunger. That is, there is food sure. to satisfy that desire, that hunger. Not always. Some people get hungry and there is no food. You know, it depends on where you let's, are. Let's do something tonight. Let's, let's do something magical. Magic. Magical. If we get over 5,000 likes tonight... Mm -hmm. Five thousand. Then we'll blow likes. TJ live on the no, show. No, I was gonna say I'll take the mask off and never wear it again. 
Wow. Wow, that's crazy. If you get 5,000 likes. 5,000 likes. Before the show is done. Before the show ends. Ben will remove the I mask will for remove all the mask time. And never wear it again. For all that's time. Crazy. You know, that, you know. That's just crazy, man. It's almost as crazy as what happened in Atlantic City, but I guess we don't have time. Oh, fuck you! Shut the fuck up! up. Atlantic goddamn city, Scotty. I'm not gonna talk about it. I'm just saying it's almost. Don't even mention it. We don't even fucking mention that. We don't mention that fucking shit. I know. Come on, dude. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. Fuck. Fucking kidding. All right, fine. I'm not gonna talk about it. I'm done. Fucking, we already. I'm done. The hookers' families. We can't be. I'm done. Again. I'm done, TJ. I'm done. I got money to do that. Jesus, dude. Be quiet, everybody. Let's just Ben of Hang X, everybody. So if we Look recognize at. in ourselves a desire to experience the divine, to have a relationship with the divine, oh, perhaps we should hang more X. carefully so look at both our desire as well as the corresponding reality to it. And so, ask yourself this question. I don't, I don't think you question, really objectively evaluate reality. Your bias is so apparent to anyone that knows anything about you. It's like... You act like you're you're trying to present this objective argument when you're so so entirely biased in one direction. I mean, if you actually examine the evidence and the things you're talking about, you would just know, know you have no leg to stand on. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, he's wearing um, Matrix glasses with the Death Note music playing behind him, so he's obviously oh. right. Uh. Okay, I, I retract my previous statements. Good. That God could manifest himself to us, and has God manifested himself sure, to is us? Is there any yes. uh, worldview, any philosophy, it's any religion yet. that claims that God has manifested himself and explains... TJism. Uh, your Christianity has claimed in the Bible that God manifested himself as many things, like, you know, burning bush... He appeared to people in visions. By the way, if our view count never exceeds 5,000, I know it's bullshit and it won't happen. You know, um, I have uh, powers, you know, because me and Ben are not even in the same room right now. And yet, look what I can do with my hand. Wow. Look at that. Fuck. Look at that. Look at that shit. Look at that. I'm in Tennessee. Ben is in Wisconsin. It's impossible. Wisconsin. I, I am currently in New Zealand. I'm fishing in New Zealand right now, so... ...by what mechanism he has done that. Now, of course, the God of the Bible provides both a means, a mechanism, as well as a historical person who was the incarnation of God. I'm talking <laughs> about funny. Jesus Christ, of course. You see, the desire to see God, the Bible calls this the image of God. The Bible says that God has an image, and that image is how we see God. The Bible says... You know, the funny thing is the anime that he stole all this music from pretty much says that human beings have no immortal souls and that death is the end. Yeah. So it's kind of strange he would choose this music to accompany his religious video. The sun is the image of the invisible God. More cherry-picking of the Bible, you know, to justify complete and utter nonsense being spouted by morons who aren't able to critically evaluate anything. Oh, you're, you're the one who can't critically evaluate. If you, you should just acknowledge that everything the Bible says is true. Why would I do that? Because that's how you evaluate things critically. You start with the truth and you move your way back. Yeah, that's not how and you The truth evaluate. is the Bible. <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. The Bible is the truth, and the truth is the Bible, baby! Oh, baby. yeah! Yeah. That Jesus Christ is the image of God, and so Jesus Christ is the answer to the problem of divine hiddenness. Jesus Christ is the answer to you stubbing your toe on a table. Jesus fucking Christ! That's it. Pretty much. Is so you saying Jesus fucks Christ or Jesus fucking Christ? Jesus fucking Christ. Okay. Jesus fucking Christ. Fucking is Jesus' middle name. Oh, okay. His first name is Jesus. His last name is Christ. His middle name is fucking. That's oh. where we get the word fucking. Oh, well. You learn something new every day. Yeah, you do. You see, in the person of Jesus Christ, we have God in human flesh. Now, God is not human flesh. The flesh of Jesus is normal human flesh and is, in every sense, human as we are. But inside that flesh, the, the soul, the spiritual reality of Christ, is that he is the eternal Son of God. And I've made a video about this, and you can certainly check that out. I'm not going to spend time talking about who Jesus is in this video. Isn't everyone a fucking child of God, though? I mean, what, what difference does it even have? What, what, does, it, what does it mean to be the Son of God? 
or to be God on earth or whatever else people have said about Jesus. I mean, I, don't, I still don't see what the unique property is of Jesus. You know, he performed miracles. I mean, so did supposedly a bunch of other people in the Bible. He came back from the dead. You have any idea how many resurrections there are in the Bible? There's uh, hundreds. TJ. Yes. I just, uh, I was sleeping. I had this terrible dream. I was watching this Venom Fang X video, and it didn't make any sense. Oh, God. It's true. Oh, God. It's, it's true. Ass. Why, God? Why? Scotty's become a believer watching this. He's invoking the name of God. I am. God save us from watching this boring if, pile of I'll shit. Ah. If God comes and intervenes right now and strikes Venom Fang X down in this video, if you see him literally die in this video, <laughs> he's smited by God, then I'll... I'll become a believer. God, I ask you to smite this man to prove who us that you exist. Then I saw him die. Do, 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 do. Now I'm, I'm a believer. believer. Do, do, do. Suffice to say, the image of God, the person of Jesus Christ, he is the means by which human beings see and relate to God. And so the Why does he keep disappearing and reappearing? What is the point of that? Jump cut. Yeah, his editing. But why why do it that way? I, this doesn't make any sense. Anyway, um, like Ben said, if, he, if we get 5,000 thumbs up in this episode, he will remove the mask for all time. Oh, shit. And, you what know, happen? there's only 2,000-something people in the room right now, so all you people, if you want to see Ben never wear the mask again, you got to go out there and get people involved. Fuck. Don't stop believing, everyone. you got to get them to come Hold to the show. To you got to tell them to thumbs it up. you got to tell them to watch. you got to tell them to listen. you got to tell them to love. Answer to divine hiddenness is man well, had that relationship with face. God. Man will one day have that relationship <laughs> with God again when Jesus Christ returns. But something happened in the middle. We are very when much Jesus in an returns, unfolding. Harry, me, me and him are gonna chill. We're gonna drink some beers. We're gonna eat some fucking wings because you know I, I know Jesus is real. Then I'm like, oh fuck, fuck eating plants. I'm gonna eat wings, and we're just gonna hang out. We're gonna go to the clubs. We're gonna do fuck. We're gonna do the town. It's gonna be great. I, I'm really looking forward to Jesus coming back. What about you guys? Looking forward to that? Yeah, and uh, I heard he's bringing Harry Potter with him, too. Harry so Potter. Me, That's fucking sweet. And me and Jesus and, and Harry Snape Potter. Yep. Potter. And the Potter. Emperor from Potter. Star Wars is going to be there, too. It's going to be fucking off the hook. That's going to be a fucking Billy sweet party. All sorts of, doesn't know me. <laughs> all sorts of totally real Bill. people are showing up. Bill Shatner. I never met he the man. claims that he doesn't know me. Right, well, I don't know the man. Tell the story, Ben. Oh, you, you want to go into that? Oh, my. Yeah, so, I, so, I, want, I want them to understand the reference oh. when we say it. So first we saw uh, William Shatner do his panel at the Star Trek convention, and there was a long line of people asking a question, and they said, you know, William, when will you bury the hatchet with George Takei? And... William Shatner's like, I'll bury a hatchet in George's head. That was the first thing he said, and we we're all kind of like, whoa. Oh, yeah. You know? And then he's like, I don't know the man. I, I, you know, I don't know him. I don't know the man. And then the next day, George Takei gets on the sh uh, on stage. He's like, oh, my. He's like, Bill is so mad, and he's claiming it. That I don't know him. Well, if I don't know you, then why are you upset about not coming to my wedding? It was funny. Yes. Those two hate each other. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. In drama, and a schism took place where man and God were separated. And that's going to be important uh, when we talk about our next two. No, nothing you say is important. You're wrong. Arguments. Don't be upset if you don't. Argument know number two. Me. The problem of religious pluralism. Damn religious pluralism and its shit. This question is often phrased like this. How do I know which religion is right? Why are there so many religions? Oh this is typically a question the uh, asked you out don't of confusion. Because you're a moron. He does know. Ding, 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 ding. Christianity is right. All the other he religions. He believes are wrong. he knows, but I don't think he actually knows. And not all Christianity, just his particular version of Christianity oh, is so right. He, so he, uh, Venom X is definitely the G Man variety of Christian, where it's like his version is the correct one. All other versions, like Catholicism, are like, it's nonsense. That's jibber jabber. They pray to the don't Virgin Mary. They're jabber. crazy. They're crazy. Praying to a woman. That, yeah, that's why I draw the line. They're playing to a woman. Come on, guys. We all know women are inferior. You know, we're all MRAs here. Yeah. Hardcore. I'm a MGTOW. 
Oh, man, go in my own fucking way. <laughs> go your own way. Go in your own way. If, I, if, I'm walking, strip club. if I'm walking down the street and I see a woman on the other side, on, on the same side of the street as me, you I cross, cross the, street. the street. You know, I'm like, fuck you, woman. Actually, that's the opposite way. Don't fuck them. He's like, I hate you, woman. Get away from me. Yeah, it's like, get out of here. And you claim you they don't know you. I'm going the opposite way as you. I'm going my own way, a man's way. That's the best way to go, TJ. Yeah. Going to go through the jungle. Chasing a trail of, of Cheez-Its. From the cheez it trail. And not to be insulting, but out of ignorance. When someone does not know which religion is true, they tend to throw up their hands in frustration and say, I don't know what's right, and I so maybe right. they're all wrong. And that's taking like it to an extreme. To the, uh, and I think it's like if you go to the grocery store or something and you see the candy bar section, you're like, which candy bar is right for me? Fifth Avenue. And then you're like, ah, I'll fucking know. I guess I'll just get a fucking payday. And then you're like, ah, did I choose right? And then you find out later that Snickers is the one true candy bar. And Bill, you're like, ah, I'm so dumb. Bill, you claim that you don't know me. Say it about Venom Fang, though. Venom, you're claiming that you don't know me. Does he know you? Does he know no, you, he doesn't know me. Does he me. know you in the biblical sense? He doesn't biblically know me. Mm. I don't know, Ben. I have a hard Never. time believing that. He is uh, he is uh, over and above you. Someone said Primus. Why well, known as Big Brown Beaver doesn't know me. <laughs> Primus. That's where atheists Prime typically ass. take it. Because they don't know, because they don't even know how to begin to... Uh, decipher which religion is true, they nothing. just tend to be uh, very flippant and dismissive and say they, they must all therefore be false. Because it's basically the equivalent of opening up, like, Grimm's fairy tales and being like, identify the true story in this book. <laughs> the answer is none. That is the answer to the question. None of those stories are true. Yeah, and I mean, oh my. it's so presuppositional. It's like, which religion is right? It's like, hmm, let's see, none of them. You're just dismissive because you just are frustrated no, by all I, the choice. I, I, I'm dismissive because there's no evidence. There's no objective way or as objective as possible way to look at religion and say, oh, there's tons of evidence that Christianity is correct and here's why. It's uh, just There is evidence, Scotty. Have oh. you ever seen a sunset? Yes, I have. Isn't have you looked it, at isn't a it, flower? Isn't, yeah. Isn't, yeah. Isn't, isn't, aren't those things beautiful, Scotty? Sure, they can be. Well, let me ask you this. Does every painting have a painter? Yeah. Does every uh, work of art have an artist behind it? Yeah. Well, you know what? Those flowers and that sunset, they're works of art. And there was an artist behind them called God. Okay, what is your evidence for that? I just gave you the evidence. You're too stupid, you fucking atheist moron. You're so dumb. Why don't you understand theistic reasoning and logic? You stupid fucking just, atheist fuck. I never took that course in school. I'm sorry. You know, I wish Scotty Cena was here. He'd understand. Yes, he would. He's a little fucking smarter than your dumb ass. I wish he was here, too. I think he's on vacation right now. I'm gonna fuck your ass! What? And then you're gonna be humble. He's, he's, oh, is that a, that's a recording of Scotty Cena I'm taking. Yeah. Oh, okay. we, have a sound, we have a Scotty Cena soundboard on You know, standby. I mean... I mean, last time me and Scotty Cena saw each other... Trust me, if he was really here, you'd be on the floor I know, in a puddle bitch. of blood it, 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 with your actually, ass beat. I saw him in the Drunken Peasants parking lot, and, you know, we had we exchanged words, and, you know... Oh, you exchanged... You didn't exchange no we words, We did exchange Scotty words, Cena. and, I mean, luckily there was a car, I had a running car, and I was able to jump into it to escape Scotty Cena. Scotty car. Cena don't talk in words, he talks I with actions. Your daughter, I know, I that's why I had to escape. Son. I barely escaped he Scotty Cena. He fucked your son, Scotty. He did. He fucked your son right in his fucking asshole. Well, you know, I mean, that's just how That's Scotty what Scotty Cena, Cena does. He saw your son. He's like, you know, I'm not even gay. I'm not even into fucking people's sons. But because it's Scotty, I'm going to fuck his son. You know, I mean, he's a crazy guy, TJ. Oh, say? shit. Yeah, yeah. You guys have 25 more likes. 2,500 more likes to go. You're halfway uh, there, buddy. You know, I don't think it. these losers, these fucking losers Oh, can my do God. It. These people I can't do it. I don't think None of you can do it. Because you know what? It was up to me to get done. People like me are winners. We can get shit done. You losers sitting there at home, you can't do shit. You're all failures. Can't do shit. You're garbage. We you guys suck winners. compared to me. We're winners. I am a winner. So I've been everything. Someone in the chat room said nine inch nails. We are the nine inch males. 
I mean, that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of underestimating myself a little bit there, but I guess yeah. I, I guess I can accept nine it. inch males. Uh, I mean, <laughs> that's oh, that's just an average, you know. Yeah, TJ pulling us all down. Yeah, TJ, what the hell, man? Come if on. it was just those two, they could be a higher number, but yeah, unfortunately, TJ is included. So. People were like nineteen inch males at that point. Doom, doom, doom. I think a more balanced approach would be this. You need to do a study in comparative religion and say which religion. All right, this music is, is pissing me off. Let's All right, and next is one is the garbage. truth about Bernie Sanders. Oh, truth. Bernie Sanders. Finally. Oh my. Finally, the truth. I've been wondering what Hi, the everybody. This is Stefan Molyneux from Feed It Main Radio. Hey, fine. All right. Manure. Fine. You want Bernie Sanders. Stephane. Let's do Bernie Sanders. So this. You want to do him? Stephanie Manure is going to do Bernie Sanders, wow, guys. Wow, this, th this video probably going to have like 10 million views. He's Pretty do explicit. Bernie Sanders. Mm. Yeah, this is fucking crazy. I can't believe what this. Are you, what are you saying? He. He's a woman. Stephanie Manure. Oh, my God. I didn't realize. Nine that. inch you didn't respect. Fails. That's a huge faux oh, pas. Oh, you didn't wow. respect her gender identity, Scotty. I, I apologize. I, did, I didn't realize. I'm, I'm very ignorant of these things. You are ignorant. I'm sorry. That's the truest I thing apologize. you've ever said. I apologize to the Drunken Peasants audience for this lapse in oversight and judgment. You know, I'll now be removing myself and resigning from the Drunken Peasants for offending so many people. A nine-inch whale. This is an examination of the Democratic presidential nominee or guy who wants to become president. President Bernie Sanders, a uh, socialist a Democrat, as he calls himself, will unpack out of here, Scott, all of that as we go anymore, forward. Bitch. But before we start, bitch, get gone, get out of here, bitch, get out of here, You're like fired, get out of here, like Bernie You're fired. Sanders, man, get out of here. I want to apologize again to the drug and peasant no, audience. No, no, you're fired, I'm bitch. Fired, Scotty. You're fired, bitch. Go away. Bye. I'm trying to listen to Steph. Bye, bitch. I'm trying to listen Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord to this you. lovely woman, Stephanie Manure. Oh, it's not playing. Oh, there we go. A uh, little bit of a big picture view. Okay. Total gross domestic product for all of Europe. Okay. Total economic output for everyone and everything in Europe in 1870. Yes, it's relevant. Just hang on for a sec. It's about a trillion dollars, give or take, right? Okay. So the entire economic output of Europe in 1870 was a trillion dollars. Okay. All right. Now, socialists. One trillion dollars, everybody. Oh my! One, entire economic output of all of Europe. Yeah. One trillion. Some really started in 1860, 1870, and so on, and became very big with the progressive movement of the Fabian socialists at the turn of the 20th century. But let's just, you know, pick 1870 where socialism was getting its start. Now, if you said to socialists, "We are going to take the entire economic output of all of Europe and give it to the poor." They'd have said, well, actually, that's kind of communism, but whatever, right? They would have been completely thrilled. So total European GDP, gross domestic product in 1870, is $1 trillion. All right. Now, the U.S. welfare state spends a trillion dollars a year on direct transfer payments to the poor, like on the welfare to the poor. Now, that is uh, something to mull over, right? When socialism starts, it says we want to help the poor by transferring money from the rich to the poor. The equivalent of the entire European domestic product in 1870, 1870 is being transferred to the poor every single year in America. And the war on poverty really started in the 1960s under LBJ's war on poverty. Today, the U.S. government spends 16 times... We're not winning that one. Just point that out, especially not in Detroit or some other depressed Detroit. cities. Although they, this, Detroit does now have the satanic statue, so that's pretty cool. What's Scotty doing? Get out of here, Scotty. Get out of here, Scotty. I've been rehired as a new interpreter, TJ. No, you haven't been rehired. Yeah, You've been fired yourself. permanently. I've been rehired. Get out of here. No. Get out of here. We don't want you. Beat me in a fight then, TJ. Beat you in a fight? I don't have to do that. You're fired. <laughs> well, I'm, yes, I'm taking the show over. You're garbage. Hey, that mic is, is it has a loose wire. I don't care. Has a loose wire. I don't care. I'm taking over the show. <laughs> I run the show. Now you're fired. You and Venerable fired. Oh, fuck. You guys need to get the fuck out of here. I'm tired of your shit. It's a, I, we can't even hear you now. You broke the mic. You broke it. <laughs> it's broken. I blame you, Sit down. I've rehired myself. I'm 
All what right. is this like a union takeover or what? You you could be rehired, but as secretary. Shit. No, no, I, I run this shit now. I knew we should. No. We shouldn't have started the drunken peasants union. You're my personal secretary, is what you are. Bullshit, bitch! I run the show. You're fired, TJ. Get you out take of here. notes for me. You're fired, TJ. That's all you do, is TJ. Like, you're fired. As the great Donald I'm Trump said, now. you're fired, TJ. You know, um. You guys aren't very good at business type stuff, so I kind of manipulated my way to have 100% control of the podcast. Times more yeah, after adjusting for inflation on so means-tested welfare or anti-poverty programs than it did at the beginning of the war on poverty. Now, TJ's totally done. Now, so. Poverty was being solved in America in the post-war the period. You can see more the like this. TJ has been totally eliminated from the show, guys. Oh, what the fuck? I've actually rehired both of you guys, but I'm only going to pay you a dollar It's going a year. down by about 1 percentage point every year until the government, God bless them, they decide to come in and help. And then poverty stops declining. And um, the, the, the decline in poverty kind of came to a grinding halt at the beginning of the war on poverty. So the more the... Oh, oh we're shit. atheists. For the rest of the show, it's going to be like this skinniness. TJ fucked it all up. God damn you, TJ. That's, you know, that's why I fired TJ and rehired him for a dollar a year. Because all TJ is worth is one fucking dollar. Even then, I feel like I'm overpaying TJ. What I think we're going to do is uh, take a quick break. We're going to play some more exclusive Sex Twister audio. Don't forget, we get to 5,000 likes tonight. I will remove my mask and never wear it again. And we will be right back, bitches. Tamed a man, the wire played my man. Now everything's goddamn 
I'd be in Alaska by now And if I was, I'd be cold as hell And I wanna stay home in bed And eat some tuna fish on bread Never been happier in my life Cause I got a wife and a knife And I'm thinking about killing her And I told her to sweep the floor Do the dishes, stick out the garbage She ignored my every word And I don't think I can have that here Cause we just wouldn't get along for very often She likes green and I like red She likes blue and I don't She likes to eat salad with a spoon And I like to eat salad with a fork and knife Then she likes to drink water And I like to drink whiskey and ice She leaves me no choice Cause I don't like the horses And their curly manes And their tails Or their hooves To say the least I don't like I don't know I guess I like choices And not horses with saddles To ride around We're back. Let's see where we're at. These pathetic motherfuckers. Oh god, they haven't. Even, they haven't even gotten to four thousand. It's probably oh, not going to happen. Yeah, it's not going to happen. These guys are garbage. These losers can't do anything right. What's wrong with them? All right. Um, this next video is entitled "The Amazing Atheist." Atheism is a religion. Deal with the facts. Wow. But we're atheists. We don't have a religion. That's kind of the point. How many times are we going to correct atheists on this, only for them to again turn around and restate the same thing? Once again, I'm going to prove that atheism is a religion. And that's not going to take very long. And then after that, I'm going to connect the amazing atheist's again, behavior in a previous man, discussion that he had had, had with to me. had to do it so many times, to, prove atheism is a religion. It's ridiculous how many times he had to prove it. True, true empiricism has pwned you so many times. Oh, do you really, God, so many times. Do you really want to get down this road again? Like the time DJ? we got in a discussion... And I said something, and he was mad, and that proves I was wrong. You know? Prove that because of his alternative Proved. beliefs and views, they uh. keep him from objectively hearing the information. So when a theist comes into a discussion with these people that have these alternative ideas How come you can't views, accept the objective reality that everything was made by a magic space wizard? That's also the definition of irony. Atheists are not objective. They just blindly believe in things. It's like, oh, wow. We're really going to go this, down this road. They are incapable of hearing the evidence that the theist gives to them uh, because of their alternative beliefs I, I that they have. Think, um, atheism itself. Do you think someone like him like is aware of how stupid that sounds and like says it because he knows it's dumb because he wants to get that... Like, um, are people paying attention to him, or do you think he, like, legitimately believes, like, it's ridiculous that people are atheists? Like, of course there's a God. It's so obvious that there's a God, and it's the Christian God. Oh, does not specify, okay, 
atheism because of disbelief or lack of belief in God or gods. Atheism because I'm in a state of denial. Everything has a, to be taken into consideration stupid, based on how the atheist reacts and responds. Uh, uh, now, this is more semantic time with uh, these people. This is we we're gonna say this is the definition of atheism. Which I like this. I put an I put an atheism into uh, not YouTube into Google and says atheism is not disbelief of gods or denial of gods. It is lack of belief in gods. All the dictionaries define atheism as a belief there is no god. People are saying we played this before, so let's move on. Oh, we have apparently. Okay, I must okay. This right. is uh, it's so dull and forgettable. This that, next yeah. one is Aaron Ra responding to us debating Kent Hoven, which by the way is in the works. Works. We're working on it. So Kent Hovind gets out of prison and every atheist wants a piece of it. I understand that. I hate liars. What happened to Rip Torn here? Deceived, even the little ladies huh? and especially other people's children. So of course I'd love to have the opportunity to get into it with Mr. Not Dr. Kent Hovind. As would every other atheist activist with a passion for science and a concern for truth. Understand though that this charlatan is every kind of fraud and he just wants to reestablish his racket. His shtick is to pretend to be more important than he is. We all know that his thesis was just as bogus as the PhD that he okay, bought from a mail order. Catalog. That's every creationist. There, we're, there's no creationist you can look at and say, this is the creationist who's legit. Yeah, it's like, you know, James Randi going around debunking uh, these people. I have psychic powers, or I have these abilities. I mean, just because someone is a charlatan or liar doesn't mean they shouldn't be exposed. And we're not really there to expose them. I think people can decide that for themselves based upon the things he said and done. And I mean, you know, one of the criteria for the debate is we can't bring up the prison thing, and that's fine. But at the same time... I don't understand why not, because everyone already knows about it anyway. I, I mean, yeah, everyone knows about it. I mean, it's not like it's a fucking secret. I mean, I, I just think... Ken Hovind wasn't in prison. He was meditating on obviously top of Obviously, he's, he's embarrassed about it. That's fine. Whatever. We can stick to purely the facts during the debate. But I think, I mean, even in that contest, it's just going to be a joke. I mean, yeah, he's going to have his sophistry, and he wants half the time because he wants half the time to, you know, promote his bullshit, and that's fine. But come on, we, we already know the outcome is going to be. It's not going to be like, we're going to talk to him, and he's going to go, oh, you're right, or, you know, we're going to listen to him and go, oh, I'm convinced now. I mean, obviously, the way he's framed it is, is already showed that he's like, well, you sell it to your people, I sell it to mine. It's pretty clear that's what his hope is for the debate for about $100. He also claims to have taught high school science for about 15 years, hoping that folks will think that he has some verifiable connection to a high school somewhere. And actually Also, uh, I mean, like, even if he did teach high school science, no one gives a shit. Yeah. Ben is, is licking the But what I suspect is really the case is that he may have preached to homeschooled kids at his house, which he used as a church for some time. I can understand atheist podcasts wanting to have this guy on to take him to task, but remember, he is a con man, a professional fraud. So. In his mind, he gains merit and financial supporters as a result of being oppressed in the face of adversity. So go ahead and have him on, but only as a sideshow freak, someone to gawk at. Show him the contempt that's he right. deserves. That's, um, Don't treat that's him like an us. opponent. That's up to anybody to decide what, what he is, though. I mean, like, you know, we're, we're just putting him on the show. Put him on the show up against somebody, uh, to yet to be determined. But uh, once he's on the show and he's going up against whoever he's going up against, I mean, it's going to be up for the audience to decide what they think of him. If they think he's a circus, you know, sideshow freak, whatever. You know, I think I think Ken Ham is all of those things. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I think Ken Ham is all of those things, and him and Bill Nye debated, and I'm sure that probably raised a lot of people's awareness of, hey, oh, this creationist museum exists. Wonderful. I want to give them money. Yeah. As if he had something to bring to the table. So the drunken peasants invited him onto their show, which is fine, and they invited Thank me to you, come Aaron. on to defend evolution Aaron. against him as if he Sorry, Aaron. some threat Aaron. to science. Otherwise, Aaron. I refused to do it, much as I would have liked to have done it, because... Uh, we so, never we never asked him to be on. Yeah, we just want to make that clear. As probably fans of ours, we never invited Aaron Ra to come. Yeah, on there were show. several people considered. Aaron Ra was not among them. Not because Aaron Ra is incapable of winning that debate. Sure, that's not because the of course he is, but simply because I I assumed Aaron Ra would refuse because he has a distaste for me personally. Well, not even that. I mean, it's probably just you don't really you can't you don't really know him in any capacity. So it's not like oh, let me just ask this person to be a part of this debate. Right. There's with, for, there's people that we know that are qualified 
and uh, who are more friendly towards the podcast. So we never did ask Aaron. Some of our fans may have asked him. That's on them. They don't represent us. I mean, they do to an extent, but they don't represent sure, what we're going to I'm sure do in the future. Was. It was probably just a misunderstanding. Sure. They wanted to call it a debate. I will not lend legitimacy to that fraud. A debate challenge implies that he has some significance that he never had, and now the only importance he can feign depends on how much importance you, you let him pretend to have. George Carlin uh, said that it's he pretty had much, as much like the case. The case, I mean, like having a debate with someone, I don't think does uh, imbue them with any greater importance than they already have or not. I mean, it, it just depends on how he does in the debate. If he goes in a debate against, say, Thunderfoot or uh, some other scientific-minded person. Uh, if he wins that debate and people are like, holy shit, Ken Hovind really made some great points, then they're going to say, wow, you know, maybe he's more than we thought he was. But that's not going to happen. We all know what's going to happen. He's going to present the same arguments that creationists always present. He's going to get the floor wiped with him, and people are going to have the same perception of him going out that they did going coming in. Pretty is the Pope. It's just that there weren't that many people who realized that yet. So... When you talk out of your ass, pretending to know things you don't know, you expect to get a pass for that, as if, if you have declared yourself a religious representative. But let's remember that science is a meritocracy, which means that you have to submit your evidence and your hypotheses for peer review, where experts get to take it apart. Uh, debate is not science. Merit. Kent Hovind's tactic is, of course, directly opposite of that, because he has no evidence, no hypotheses, nothing to test. Hot. And everything he does say can you be do. proven wrong by anyone, and what? is immediately. But he only speaks in venues where the opponent doesn't have the opportunity to disprove him then and there. His con is a show where he cannot dazzle us with brilliance, so he'll baffle us with bullshit. All he has to do is pretend Sounds to be like some Castlevania music almost. He has no accountability whatsoever and will never make any honest admission when you prove him wrong. So the most so, you can do Sure, we never is we never expected that he would. We never none of us have any fantasy that at any course during this debate or whatever you want to call it, Kent Hovind is going to be like, "You know what?" You atheists are right. God's <laughs> bullshit. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, don't, I, mean, I don't know what I was thinking. And of course, it has to be framed in such a way and done in such a way where, you know, he has all this control in debate as well. I mean, that's just how a lot of creationists operate. That's just simply... Well, the, that's, why, but that's why we're putting him, we're putting up his bullshit versus science. And if you, you know, the only reason you wouldn't want to have that debate is if you're afraid science is going to lose the debate. I'm not afraid that science is going to lose that debate. Bill is pretending like he doesn't know me. <laughs> to generate sympathy for him among those with more money than brains, and he'd be back in business until he's Good old Bill rest. Shatner. Bill. By having him on your podcast, you're only doing him a favor. You're so welcome. He responds by demanding terms? No, 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 no. He will play by your rules without any fuss, or he can wallow in his newfound obscurity. I like, uh, here you are, Aaron, you know, like, you've not even acknowledged our existence until now. Yeah, and it, the fact that it's taken Kent Hovind to acknowledge, for you to even address us or talk about us, kind of says that you do care about Kent Hovind, so. Security, that's how it should be. Okay, well, you would when, get the exact same response if you were to debate. Ben invites, and ben. When, when he when he when you and him are talking about having a debate or discussion, you can decide what terms you're going to lay out or what terms you refuse to accept. But we're going to accept his terms, and we're going to have the debate on those terms because they're fair enough terms. He doesn't want us to curse. You know what? Uh, we don't have to curse. I'm not. We, we're the three of us are barely even going to be participatory. Right? This is going to be. Our, you know, whoever we choose, we're just going to be like, we're almost going to be the venue at that point. And it's going to be whoever is the representative of science and atheism and secularism versus Kent Hovind. And it's going to be timed and they're both going to get equal time and they're both going to be able to say whatever they want to say. And you know what? I'm pretty sure that... Science is going to win the debate. The I don't need to make sure that we, we don't have any handicaps. He can assign whatever stupid handicaps he wants to. Equal time, fine. No profanity, whatever. It's a stupid rule. We can agree to it in order to get him on the show because obviously people are interested in hearing this. The only difference Including is you, Aaron. Sean's delusion seems to stem from a diagnosable condition, and you don't want to be seen as making fun of someone whose condition is that special. 
sure but you're not going to get any more substance out of Hovind. You're only giving it to him. So when he suggests that you arrange for him to debate 30 different atheists for seven minutes each, you're building him up in the eyes of the ignorant. You're allowing him to pretend to be the inevitable. We didn't suggest that. That was, that was him, him aggrandizing. Right. We're, there's going to be but one person debating him. Victor of insurmountable will be, odds. will be determined so the shortly. Most, in the eyes of the most pathetic of the wanna believers, the, he'll be their fucking hero. And he will once again be the king of fools. Seriously. Matt Delahoney should never have debated Psy 10 Bruggen Cape, but because he did, no one needs to do it again. He's done. Likewise, Bill Nye finished off Ken Ham. He shouldn't have had that debate either, but it was conclusive, and they're done. Hitchens similarly buried Dembski. Uh, and Robert Price effectively eliminated William Lane Craig. These people don't need to be... T <laughs> Someone says, Aaron Ra looks like my asshole after I eat Thai food. <laughs> oh, God. Don't be so mean. If anything, he looks like he's just some head ridges away from being General Martok. Yeah, 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 I see that. Taken seriously in the first place. Hoven was the only one who was dealt with appropriately by the federal prison system. He is now out of the game and shouldn't be treated like he ever had game. I mean, seriously, if you haven't across someone who accuses pediatricians of conspiring to conceal the truth of stork theory, you don't give these people a forum and an audience and sure let them sell wares from we your venue. We had Time Johnny on this show, all right? Yes. We had a guy who literally doesn't even make sense on our show. This is a forum for anybody. I mean, th th there's no opinion so crazy that we probably wouldn't feature it on the Drunken Peasants podcast. Doesn't mean we agree with it. Doesn't mean we endorse it. Doesn't mean we're giving credence to it. It just means, hey, look at this crazy guy and his you know, ideas. People right now are laughing at the ridiculousness of hearing General Mar talk. Uh, guys, we did hear General Mar talk give a speech with Galron. Yep. Galron and General fucking Mar talk. Talked in front of us for a half hour in character, and they rapped. They rapped too. Awesome. Yeah, and and General uh, Martok also said that we need to fix climate change. Yeah, he even said, Klingons have scientists. He said that anyone who does it, who denies climate change is a moron, and yeah, that even Klingons have scientists. So if I don't even know what the conservatives can say to that. Gen to General eat. fucking Martok. General Martok will fucking shoot you with phasers, and if that doesn't take care of you, a fucking batleth will. Shove a bitch. batleth right up your fucking asshole. Well, that's why you don't debate creationists. Instead, oh, you should yes, invite them to cough up their evidence and submit it to peer review. Since they won't do that, and we all know why, then I'll suggest the fairest possible compromise. One that I think would help make the point for whomever wants to okay. watch, regardless of their initial position. He's going to make a suggestion to us, so let's hear it. Have your creationist and someone with savvy in science both answering a series of questions where every query must be answered by both parties so that we get to see how science explains this and how faith fails to explain that. That's a good idea. A good example question might be why we have fingernails. Then we'd hear the competent evolutionary explanation followed by some ex lame excuses. You know, that's how God did it and who are we to question God because God, the Lord works in delirious ways. Each contestant could submit a dozen or so questions that they would like to have asked, but they're still going to be at the mercy of the audience, and that audience should be mixed. So that we're sure to I have some number of I guarantee you that our audience has no mercy whatsoever. Too. Remember, the Not goal is to reach shred. the people who most need this information, and seeing how faith fails against reason again and again and again in every topic will be illustrative for all but the most desperately deluded people. What I don't Here's get is thing, he, he, he knows this. He knows that there's no way Kent Hovind is winning this debate. So why, How does could he, he? why does he care about him being featured on the show against someone who's going to fucking trounce him? It's not even a matter of, like, the superior rhetorician or something. It's a matter of here's a bullshit fantasy versus actual scientific fucking facts and truth and evidence. He can't win. He literally cannot win unless you're a moron. They use Hoven for this. No sincere believer could identify with him to start with. So you could wipe the floor with him on every single point, and it wouldn't make any difference to anyone. And he would try to work out some way to get paid for it or get credit for it somehow anyway. So we're going to have to let that well, of course, he's a clever bastard. Let him get a more ethical career in used cars or multi-level marketing. Okay, hold well, on. We, find we all know that regardless of the actions of the drunken peasants, Ken Hovind is going to rise to the top yes. of the shit heap again. 
you know, this is, look, he's a, he's a Christian. And these Christians love nothing more than fucking putting their hands. He was their, their martyr like for this. the last decade too. Woe is us! We're so victimized and persecuted. Oh, yeah, See, Kent Hovind was in prison. You know that's proof that us Christians are so persecuted. Probably One of our greatest leaders was locked in prison. away by the secular state, just like Nelson Mandela. Just fucking like him. All right, next video. Aaron Raw, you have no idea what you're talking about, dude. Mart. Hey guys, what's up? Josh Fishburne here. Look, I'm a professor at the University of Common Sense, so let me go ahead and take Obama and all the other idiots that run our country to school. Here we go. You know, if we were to send, I don't know, say, scientists into the outer space, maybe to another solar system, maybe to another planet, and they were to come back with little samples, and they were to put those little tiny molecules up under a microscope, and they were to look until they found a little living organism, they would scream, we found life, we found life, we have found life. But you take those molecules, millions and millions and millions, Millions of them, and you put them together, and they're a human fetus. Well, not so much. Why is it that there's so many fetuses today that are protected by? You're so. What you're saying is that if we discovered life, alien life, alien life, we would be like, oh wow, life. But if we take those same molecules and arrange them into a human fetus, then people are just like, whatever, nothing. Well, here's the here's the difference. One is a human fetus, and there's seven billion humans, and we I'm already counting. know they exist, and there's nothing fucking consequential about them. And the other is a discovery of a new fucking life form that has a totally separate evolutionary timeline from any organism that exists on this planet. So that's why an alien life form, even if it's just a fucking microscopic bacterial thing is way more significant than some stupid human fetus that if it lives or dies, it doesn't really affect anything. Not according to God. Today. Unless it's like, you know, it happens to be Hitler or Beethoven or some shit. Not according law, to God. Including the Piper Plover, the Loggerhead Sea Turtle, and the Humpback Chubfish. But is the human you? fetus, well... It's not protected. Anyways, I challenge you today to start yeah, changing are. people's thinking by sharing this video. If you agree with That's me it? that little unborn babies should be protected, that it's An human life, baby. would you take a moment and share this video so we can reverse well, the trend of stupidity then, that's going on in America? I presume you mean something that can actually live outside of the womb. What like? if I believe that all pregnant women should be kicked in the stomach until they miscarry? Should I just keep my mouth shut about that opinion? Yes. Okay, I, I, think, I think you're an idiot if you think that. Okay. Like, comment below if you know my friend already on Facebook. Click my name at the top of the video. You Let's be friends. God bless. Right to Have a very, very beautiful day. Oh, by the way, by the way, if if you've wondered, Bubba, the Black Jesuit, still alive and kicking. Cool. You know, we just this last weekend we saw the clone of Brent Spiner. Yep, the Jesuit. He clone. was he was eating a sandwich, pretending to be Brent, -like. laughing, being like, "Yeah, there's a." And and I think he even joked around about marrying Laurie McBride. It's yeah, like, I would be marrying Laurie McBride. See, <laughs> yes, it's so sad. Gail can do nothing. I just need to report on a a criminal who's on the loose, a rapist. Oh wow! Uh, those of you who got my book, Jesus, the Eternal Bridegroom, well, you probably well, Gail, and, and, have, and have, have listened that. to my. But why didn't Gail call the pl Oh, the police are controlled by the Jesuits. By the way, you guys can get Jesus the Eternal Bridegroom and read about Bubba raping, um, I don't forget who it was, but you can get it over at audibletrial.com forward slash drunken peasants. Check out Gail's books. They're all yep. available there. Yes. Or at least My that video. one is, I believe. And yeah. I think it's read by and I'm going to have a link for the they video are. that I'm talking about where I did a reading from Jesus the Eternal Bridegroom about my men being raped at the Jesuit homosexual compound in San Francisco. Uh. Well, Terrance and Hugh were out looking for Waldo. And let me just see. <laughs> yeah, uh, that is what, the what, Waldo, by the way, everybody. Let's, just, let's review that. Looking for Waldo. I saw Waldo at the Star Trek convention. Yeah, he was there. Yep. So, uh, oh, she so found him. You guys need yep. to go to Vegas because we saw him. He was hard to see, but you, you, you know, especially in that crowd. But, but we did spot him. Said he was just shaken. Uh, they were out looking for Waldo, and they managed to pick up a distress signal from Waldo, and it had been broadcasting since before they knew that he was missing. And um, he said it's they the just now noticed signal. it because the signal was slower and warped for some reason. So they tracked the signal to California 
to San Francisco. Bullshit. But they had to go look on foot because they couldn't locate Waldo by his distress signal from the church. Uh, Sarah Avery in California is messing up all of the communications and everything, so they're not accurate. Um, Sarah Avery's gravitational pull. She's still out there. And um, so Terrance and Hugh were searching and searching, and even the Church of Gale staff was monitoring that was monitoring Sarah Avery nearby took time to help them look for Waldo. How many members and of the Church of Gale are there? And eventually, Terrance and Hugh. How many people are on that ship? Because I, I, I didn't know it was just, I thought it was just Gale's men, but apparently there's like staff too. How are they all being paid? How are they being compensated? Crewmen. Do they get told, like, you know, one day you might be able to, like, <laughs> smell Gale's hair or something? They get burritos. And They're people are just like, you know what, that's good enough burritos. for me. Unlimited ones? What, if, what about the ones that become sentient and attack the ship? Aren't the they rest they're willing to take. Wow. Who got hungry, so they decided to find a place to eat. Burritos. And everything was fine until Hugh, who was talking to Terrance, this is when they were in the restaurant, he that's suddenly Jackman, froze up way. and dropped his fork. And then they heard, and then Terrence said, you, you, you all right? And suddenly they heard a familiar a voice. It was, lick my butthole. <laughs> <Instead of condescending. laughs> She's bringing back the classics. He dropped the fork and heard, lick my butthole. It was Bubba, the black Jesuit. Holy shit. Bubba is back. Like that. Bubba it was Bubba, the morbidly. Gail, Bubba needs his own book. Come on. We need the a tale obese, of Bubba. The gay, black, Jesuit. Um, <laughs> he said those words exactly like how I said it when I said, it, when I said that he pooped in Hugh's mouth, you know, when I read it, when I did you That book, just right there. How, how do you say this? <laughs> you, you can, can read, read about Bubba pooping in Hugh Jackman's fucking mouth, guys. The best erotic... Fan fiction you'll ever read in existence. I, I mean, I say this with all sincerity. How could you not want to read this book? I know. I mean, like, seriously. Not, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> like, this is the kind of shit. Like, someone's actually writing this down. And then he, Bubba shit in Hugh's mouth. It's like, what? <laughs> you check with can you just imagine, like, Wolverine, like, and Bubba's like, hold on. Uh, had, Nick, my butt I had on. I had burritos for lunch. <laughs> yeah. Kids, imagine Wolverine's mouth full of diuretic <laughs> shit. <laughs> my audio book reading. black man's obese ass. So, obese, you saw Bubba, and he dropped ass. his fork. So, um, Don't drop apparently the fork. Bubba is alive. And... <laughs> They both and turned so around when they heard Bubba thought preparing to get raped. They were really, I can assure their pulse rate was really elevated. But Bubba was just sitting there with a skinny white young man who had freckles and red hair. They call him a ginger kid. And the ginger kid giggled all effeminately and said, oh, how romantical. Oh, how romantic. So Bubba apparently was, so was on a date. Said. He's homosexual. <laughs> that was on his date. And Terrence and He Hugh doesn't always so rape everyone. Up. Sometimes he dates. He dates ginger kids who say things like, how romantical. Well, by... Look, we know gingers have no souls. Seeing him, it was like Hugh's rapist was there sitting across from them at the restaurant, just going about his life free after he'd Sick. raped Hugh. And made Hugh dress like a little girl and lick his butthole and then pooped <laughs> inside of Hugh's mouth. And um, so they were staring at him and it caught Bubba's attention. Oh my God. So apparently Bubba didn't expect to run into them at the restaurant either. By the way, this rape happened in San Francisco. So, um, so he did leave them alone this time. And they were, they yeah, were just... Bubba's trying to eat. He's busy. Yeah, Bubba was a little busy. He's like, you know, I need to eat this burrito. He's trying to impress his I'll, ginger kid. Yeah, I'll companion. rape you guys later. You know, I know you're disappointed, but it's going to have to wait. You know, and Hugh was sitting there like, darn, I was hoping f so I could eat more shit because, you know, I, I grew a taste for it after Bubba's delicious poop nuggets entered my gullet. Shock. They didn't really, really know how to handle it. This was very traumatic for my men. So Very traumatic. Um, they found out the reason they think he escaped, even though they released a bomb to uh, execute you those know, bat those rapists. I have to believe that, that we are responsible for this survival 
of of Bubba. You know what? Bubba is a resilient individual. If you think one bomb can kill Bubba, you are fucking sorely mistaken. Yeah, Bubba probably just pooped on the bomb and encrusted it in poop, you know? So yeah, that it... he, he shit so much, he just covered the bomb up and the explosion was contained within his, like, solid, like, cement shit. Yeah. Bubba <laughs> pooped on the bomb and, and, and encased it so that it couldn't hurt, hurt him, you know? And, um, he escaped because he left uh, early after he... Uh, told Hugh to lick his butthole and he pooped inside of Hugh's mouth after uh -huh. he was it was a rape fest right and he rape just fest. left and then rape he, fest 2014 and rape fest 2015 Wait, are we getting there? tickets for that next year by the way because uh anyways let me just read what I got here so Tarant said that he and Hugh Jackman are very upset they keep going it over and over in their mind and it was like they were now they're wondering if they should have called for backup and arrested him or beat him up or something. Mm -hmm. And they're they're really suffering really bad post traumatic stress. When Terrence was trying to tell me about it, he kept making mistakes and typing, and he's he's definitely going through post traumatic stress. Stress. And then wow. right yeah. in the middle of our conversation, Hugh Jackman just broke down and had a nervous oh, nervous breakdown. On. And I'll explain that to you in a minute. Oh my God! So, so they both felt like they were getting raped all over again. Just by seeing him. And they were out there watching Bubba out on a date, free like he never raped him. What and a um, world. They're very upset. Yeah, I think they're sad. scared to Bubba go outside now living now his life. Because they know that this rapist well, these is men on the live loose. With trauma. You and know what? Maybe he's Bubba passed seemed the whole to be rape uncomfortable. thing. Yeah, she's, maybe. Oh, she's about to say Bubba was uncomfortable. Oh, wow. Well, let's hear that part. Okay. Well, too, maybe because he was worried about getting arrested. And um, he probably just didn't want his date finding they out that eat. he's a when a, they saw him, they couldn't. Eat. And, they were just stuck in that moment, and Hugh was sitting person. there reliving his and rape. Apparently, Hugh has been in denial about the rape. And this is what my men do. They often go into denial. And they don't deal with the rape. And this forced Hugh to deal with it. This happened in December 2011. Those of you who have read oh, my book, uh, and Jesus the Eternal Bridegroom, it's all in there. The Jesuits think this is funny, but for my men, it was very traumatic. So um, eventually Bubba and his date left. And Hugh Jackman said that as Bubba got up to, got up to leave... That Bubba uh, I don't know if Hugh Jackman has a Twitter account, but everyone needs to go ask him if he does what it was like to have Bubba shit in his mouth, <laughs> and tell him he needs to confront that. You know, he needs well, to, he had a chance to confront Bubba, and he he apparently didn't. You know, he needs to come to terms with the fact that he was raped, he was dressed like a little girl, and he was his mouth was shit in by a Jesuit, by a, a big black obese gay Jesuit. <laughs> The words lick my butthole. I think he said it just like oh, that. Oh wow, he um, winked and did it. He winked. Lick my butthole. So it sounds like um, I told Terrence. I think you and Hugh need to go see Gerard Butler. Gerard Butler is a psychiatrist. Oh, what? And, yes, he um, is. Don't question that. Now, does that make you feel Hugh? He's the ship's counselor. Why are all these actors like scientists and like nuclear? Scientists and all this crazy shit. Well, we know actors are smarter and better than other people are. I see. And uh, and I mentioned Morgan Fuck that Brown. Shit. I get Vladimir Putin over there. He'll who's, kick who's Bubba's a Jesuit, ass. Who's claimed to be uh, Gerard Butler? Be like, lick my other, butthole. Uh, and that and uh, Gerard's Vladimir a bit down like, kick your about butthole, that. Bitch. That's yeah. a different subject. But she hasn't <laughs> raped Gerard yet. Like Lori oh, McBride yeah, has yeah. done with Brett soon. Spiner and Coming Noah soon. Always has done with Matthew McConaughey. So at least I'm glad to hear that. But there's a lot of lies out there in the media. Tons. So um, the I media told won't them even you need to go see this Gerard. Stuff. It's totally and happening. I could just tell by all the typos and everything in the message that Hugh and Terrence are really going through post-traumatic stress up. because yeah. of this. They're all shook up. People don't understand. Jesuits, you know, they, they think their rapes are funny, but they're not. A, a rape yeah, they get together, you know, every Friday night. And like, oh, remember that? Remember Rape Fest? Oh, that God. was hilarious. Rape Fest 2011. Oh, my God. That was so much fun. Wasn't that the year that Bubba shit in Hugh Jackson? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And what, ah. what, what was it he said before he did it? Oh, God. What it was, was like, he? suck my rectum no, no. or something like uh, Lick my butthole. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was lick my That's butthole. It. I remember yeah. that. Lick my butthole. 
Rachel. Yeah. I look, I look forward to Rape Fest every year it's because not funny. Oh, man. you know I, I'm uh, getting kind of. I actually think Bubba Fest, uh, actually made a comment underneath one of my uh, videos. Well, you know, he, that was the worst he, one. He said, "Lick my butt." Yeah, well, it's not funny. Is gonna it isn't out funny. This really happened, people. And so, if you see Bubba the did. Black Jesuit. He's he's morbidly obese, okay, morbidly and he obese. always he loves to say "lick my butthole." So loves if it. you see any morbidly <laughs> obese Jesuit saying "lick my butthole," call the hey, police or contact you know, my medic for jail. Why Gale's am I gonna call the police? The Jesuits control everything. You know, I know that our audience is predominantly white, but if you happen to be an obese black fan of the drunken peasants be sure to go around saying lick my butthole in a high-pitched voice wherever you go because we want to uh we want to throw them off bubba's trail you know and as many false positives as we can throw out the better well this video is being viewed by hundreds of millions of people so. sure um, or gail cord schuler g-a-i-l-c-h-o-r-d-s-c-h-u-l-e-r at gmail.com and let them know that you've spotted him Yep. And then maybe we can get this guy. Our fans are definitely not going to do that. He's a rapist. If you guys fact, hear of that, Bubba's whereabouts, be sure to let Gail know at the address she just described. Yep. Ginger guy that was with him, Terrence is worried that that might be another rape victim. He he's he's obviously homosexual, but he could be a homosexual rape Bubba victim. Bubba brainwashed him. And we need to find out where Bubba is and get him arrested and off the streets. But Gail, it's not going to work. Know, he's still going everything. out there raping. I don't know if 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 this and ginger this kid was like talking about how Bubba saying "lick my butthole" was so romantical, then I don't think that kid has to worry about getting raped. I'm pretty sure that that kid wants it. He's going to be begging Bubba like, "Let me lick your butthole, Bubba." That's Bubba's sex slave. Come on. Yeah, Bubba's gonna be like, oh yeah, ginger kid. Oh, yeah. That's too deep, Bubba. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, ginger kid. Oh, lick my butthole. Fuck yeah. Lick it. Uh, eat my freckles. shit, ginger kid. Ooh. Oh yes, sir. Split those egg cheeks. Give me, just give me, a, just give me a bowl. Uh, yeah. Give me a bowl of shit ice cream. I'll freeze your shit and eat it like ice cream. Mm, it's like an ice cream mm. ass popsicle. Eat yeah. my frozen uh, shit, sickle. Uh, he said he had this guy. Terrence is worried that uh, might have been a rape date. You know, rape maybe date. he dr drug raped him or something like Lori McBride is doing to Brett We're Spiner. Oh yeah, um, the same way that's happening. So they still haven't found Waldo yet, and they're trying to deal with Sarah Avery also. Um, They've Maybe Waldo was inside and... Sarah Avery, guys. I saw Waldo at the convention. You know what? I, I wonder if Lori McBride was there, too. And oh, and Brent Spiner scary. was eating a shit sandwich. <laughs> it looked delicious. Lori McBride made me rape a cat once, you guys. That's a different subject. It's pretty fucked And we're trying up. to keep her from eating so much so she doesn't get so large that she becomes a black hole. But So they're still dealing with that. Hole. But right now, a this video hole? is mainly about Bubba. The morbidly black obese Jesuit. The morbidly um, black if you obese could help Jesuit. Us to arrest him morbidly, and get he's him not morbidly street. obese. He's morbidly black. They said it was black. just so morbidly weird black. to see him. And um, when he left, he's he was the restaurant. And he said, "Lick my butthole." He said that right to Hugh as he was going out, and Hugh almost had a nervous breakdown. And he actually did have a nervous breakdown. As um, while Terrence was skyping with me. He had a nervous breakdown, and they had to call Gerard Butler in to sedate Hugh Jackman. Remember, guys, if See, Hugh Jackman does have a Twitter, macho guy. Let, him, get, let him your support. Let him know that you you stand with him, and you're sorry for what happened. You're sorry that Bubba, Bubba belongs shit in, prison. in his mouth, and that we believe that Bubba deserves to be incarcerated for his gr gruesome Look, rape of Hugh Jackman. If the Jesuits didn't control everything, I'd have some hope, TJ. But as we know, they control everything. Um, I think Bubba's going to remain free. Well, you know, one thing they don't control is Gale, Cord, Schuler, and the fucking Church of Gale. God, thank God. God bless us all for Gale. Fighting the good as fight. As long as the Church of Gale is out there Defend fighting for it. us, there is hope. There remains a spark of a hope beacon on that the hill. one day the Jesuits and their raping ways will be defeated. Right, that he doesn't, we can only pray, TJ. He, he was in denial pray. about this. And then just meeting Bubba just brought it all back. It's like post-traumatic stress. Um, so uh, Bubba apparently got up and walked out of the compound after he raped you, and that's why he survived and why he's alive. And, um, I just had a feeling. He's like, you know what? I think this place is going to be bombed. I'm out. Here. 
I already mentioned the ginger kid. We want to make sure he's going to be okay. He could be another rape victim. Even if he's homosexual, we're not against homosexual people. Oh, we're just good. against rapists, okay? Whether you're a oh, homosexual rapist good. or a heterosexual rapist, nobody should be going around telling people to lick their butthole. Okay? No one. That's that's yeah. not right. It's well, that's, not right. unless that's they want to lick buttholes, okay? I guess it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if you if you, you see any me, black okay, but... or morbidly obese jazz not guy exactly. saying this, True. that's Bubba. Okay, probably Bubba. You need to call the police and uh, have this guy arrested. We're we gonna tell the police. And then this contact guy my man at Gale. Arrest Gale's him. Morbidly black. Gmail.com. Morbidly black. So right, man. what happened when Hugh had his nervous breakdown is he burst out into maniacal, like crazy laughter and started screaming <laughs> milk, milk, lemonade, milk, milk, <laughs> lemonade, milk, milk, lemonade oh, around man, the corner. Budges me. He's <laughs> How creative. Milk, milk, lemonade. The wrong corner fudges me. No comment. Gail, it's God bless genius. you. He had a God little nervous breakdown. Uh, and, you know, the Jesuits are trying to play it up that these my, that, that the men in my marriage list are all these big shot celebrities and therefore they're somehow immune to the normal reactions that anyone would get from being raped. And they try to make it hard to believe that the Jesuits have li literally raped these men. Mm. You know, I think it's a uh, startling statistic. I don't know if you guys know this, but one in every three uh, Hollywood males is raped by a Jesuit. I'm not a little fuck worse than Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson being one of the people that was, in <laughs> fact, taken advantage of by the Jesuits. I believe it was Bubba that and, But they too. have, and okay? And this Bubba it. guy, like I said, he needs to be arrested. Um... They said that Gale, when Hugh Jackman just had his nervous breakdown while Trance was Skyping me, it took 10 of the men to hold him down and to sedate him. And Gerard Butler, like I said, who's a psychiatrist, he said this can happen when a macho man has to deal with having been macho raped man. like Ooh, Hugh Jackman. Yeah. They made him dress as a little girl, too. So that's pretty tough. That's, you know, Jesuits, are, they use psychological torture when they uh, rape. They're, they did that to Brent Spiner. In fact, if it wasn't for me, I think the real Brent Spiner would have committed suicide. Oh, my God. That's, that's I've amazing. I've stuck by him through all this. Thank you, Gail. So Damn it. he's such a tough guy. Guys, he tried to shrug it off and not talk agree? about this. Can we all agree that Gale is really the savior of humanity? There's Jesus. I agree. I agree. And then there's Gale, just just a little I bit. I agree. A little bit beneath, just a tiny bit. Beneath. I would put Gale above Jesus. Wow, you could even put Gale above Jesus. Yeah. I don't know. We could have that debate. That would, that would be an all-day debate. But I'm gonna say she's at, at least almost as good as Jesus, at that very minimum. Happened in December 2011, and now he just had to face his rapist that he thought was dead. So he's going to need a lot of therapy. And we need to get this guy off the street. Get him to Gerard he's Butler. He's, he's a rapist. That. Come on. And um, man, the Church of Gale is juggling I, so, a lot of eggs right now. Um, you know, they got uh, Lori McBride over there brainwashing the Jesuit clone of Data, and they got uh, that fat chick that's threatening to turn into a black hole. She's and they're nasty. trying to find Waldo, and they're trying to find Bubba now too. Yeah, what the fuck? They got a lot of irons in the fire yeah, right now, yeah. man. They need to tie up some of these loose ends. Exactly. Exactly. Like I said, Bubba the Black Jesuit is still alive. And he says, lick my butthole. He loves to say that. <laughs> he thinks it's really cool. Uh, it he is needs cool. to be arrested. I okay? agree. Help us out, folks. We, uh, we don't, I don't want my men to run into this guy again. They were lucky that they didn't the get raped. I think that, he was so know, obsessed with his current. They would never have shit in his mouth. Or Bubba never would have shit in his mouth if Hugh Jackman would have simply licked the butthole properly. Yeah, that's all he had to do. I mean, so uh, Hugh Jackman needs to kind of take responsibility for that part of things. I mean, look, Bubba just wanted a clean butthole. He does not. He, he's more of the beast. It's hard for him to reach. Hugh's mouth was there. He could have just done Bubba a favor, and then that would have been it. And then Bubba never would have done, never would have shit in his mouth like that. We know Bubba the has. The only reason that he shit in his mouth was because he did not lick his butthole properly. Also, Bubba is morbidly obese. You know, he has, he has to go. He has to go. Hugh Jackman just happened to be there. It just happened to be the time and the place. You know, things just in life just happen. You don't expect things. Like you don't expect you get into a car accident. You don't expect you know win the lottery. You don't expect a lot of things, but things happen, DJ. You know, and 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 you know, Gail tells this story about Hugh Jackman being forced to wear the girls' clothes. The fact is that Hugh Jackman begged to wear those clothes. Yeah. 
he wanted to be a little girl and you know that's why he was raped he wants to be a pretty princess he deserves every right to be a pretty princess dj yeah you know i mean it, it wasn't even rape it was it was hugh jackman teased bubba until bubba just was powerless to resist his sexual <laughs> urges i mean look you know you, you talk about hugh jackman here this ain't just some normal looking dude this is hugh jackman this is wolverine no you know? if wolverine is hitting on you and teasing you and dressing up as a schoolgirl and rubbing no. his, his, you know, his masculine yet feminine ass all over you. You know, you're going to want to get your, your butthole licked. I mean, that's just how it goes. And Hugh Jackman, <laughs> even, several times, Hugh Jackman looked at Bubba and was like, nah, 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 nah. you know, so what is, what is Bubba going to do? You know, he's just going to sit there with blue balls all day, all night. You know, Hugh Jackman was asking for it, and Hugh Jackman deserved what he fucking got. And that's my final ruling on this. I don't think Bubba is a rapist. I think Hugh Jackman is a fucking cock tease. Wow. Strong words by a strong man. Yeah. Um, ben, how many likes do we have? You know, I'm, I'm really sorry to announce it, but I, I don't. It, we didn't quite make it out of the 5,000. We have 4,092 oh. right now. So sorry, you pathetic fucks. You didn't God. make it. You fell shy, folks. What's wrong with you, people? I know. I gave you guys all the faith in the world, and you just yeah. let me down. Before the show, Ben we was like, had what can I say? Of the heart. Ben told me, he's like, Scotty, I think they're going to pull through. I'm like, Ben, I, I think they're a bunch of losers. They're all on fucking drugs. They're idiots. They don't nothing. And well, I know. Like, I guess we know who's ben, right now. And Ben's like, I believe in them with all my heart. I did. And all, it's just, he said, Scotty, all your dreams could come true if you just believe with all your heart. And I was like, Ben, I'm a cynic. I don't believe that. And tonight will prove if you're right or not. I'm right. I know. You know I'm right. And I had faith have in won, the fans. The cynics have won tonight. What can I say? I'm wrong. I'm wrong, Scotty. You prove, you've proven me wrong. Thank, thank you, Ben. I the appreciate that. The fans are garbage. Yep. All, if you watch the Drunken Peasants podcast, you're a fucking moron. <laughs> and, you know, we look at you with nothing other than the darkest and most acrimonious of contempt. I tried to defend you guys. Ben did. Uh, are we doing more videos or are we going to the post no, show? Uh, we, we are going to the post show, the only place to catch the, the drunken peasants now. Well, I mean, shit. We're, so this is, this is the end of it? This is the end. Well, yep. Caleb, Beautiful. Well, can I now have some time to talk about Atlantic City? End. No! Get on. Cut the show. Let me just tell about this. Cut the no, show. No!